the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Night is a night of sacrifice. We are traveling. You see, you have to see what is more than your pain for your pain to not mean anything. Until you can see, the Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. If there is nothing set before you, you can't endure. Endurance is not generic. It is based on a revelation of something higher. They said they looked forward to a city whose builder and maker. That revelation made everything here to not make sense again. Until you see a dimension higher than what food can do for you. Until you see a dimension higher than the pain of your sacrifice. You will not have the stamina to stand. Let me tell you, sacrifice is a covenant. Psalm 50 and verse 5. Just before we sit down, Psalm 50, please give it to us quickly. And verse 5. It says, gather my saints together unto me. Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. You don't have to say, Lord, I enter a covenant. Your sacrifice has a voice. Lord, let it rise as a memorial. That whoever mocks your grace upon my life, let this sacrifice speak. Are we together now? These are some of the things that will make God to rebuke kings for your sake. That there is a sacrifice. There is an altar that rises as a memorial. He is a man approved. She is a woman. for the joy that was set before you. There will always come a point in your life where you will need to build capacity. Capacity. It says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, there is only one explanation. Your strength. Many believers are wonderful people, but our spiritual stamina is small. Anything just blows you and you are out of the way. God, you didn't do this and that's it. But it says, be steadfast immovable there is a level of balance stamina that was one of the blessings of the men of david among the men of david one of the blessings was that one could dig his feet on the ground in other words no matter what you do i will not move i can defeat you from one spot are we together now Please sit down for a while. Good evening, everybody. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. We'll still get back to our discussion. These are nights of encounters. Ephesians chapter 3. Let's start from verse 7. Paul is speaking. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of the saints was this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ 
9. And to make how many men? There is a grace given that when you come under the influence of that grace, you must see. I hope you understand the story. He's saying a grace was given to me. And that by the privilege of God's power, the effectual working, he gave me a grace that when people come under the influence of that grace, he can make all men see. There is a grace that can take away blindness. Regardless of your level of education. Listen carefully. Regardless of your level of exposure. You see, there are things in life that you have to be educated to understand. There are things in life you have to be wealthy to understand. There are things in life you have to be poor to understand. There are things in life you have to be ignorant to understand. But there is a grace that can make all men see. Regardless of your level, regardless of your background, whether you can speak English or not is not the issue. The grace has capacity to quicken your understanding. He says, and it shall make him of quick understanding. If the matters of the spirit were left to educated people, then those who didn't have the privilege of formal education will be out of God's program. If it were left only to the rich, then the poor will not have a chance. Are we together? If it was left only to the exposed and enlightened, then those that did not have that kind of privilege will not have anything. But thank God for his grace that when he pours his spirit is upon all flesh and that this grace can make all men see what is the fellowship the word koinonia partnership the sharing drinking from the same vessel of the mystery so you can partake of a mystery not just an anointing you can partake of the grace that has made a man to see and you will see the same thing the lord began to deal with us yesterday on hosting his power we're still going to explore along power and impartation god began to adjust our understanding to see and understand the dynamics of true spiritual power isaiah chapter 35 my assignment tonight is first and foremost to help us by the spirit understand the value of spiritual empowerment because until you recognize the value for a thing, the, the energy to pursue is not there. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll read the first six verses. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it the excellency of camel and sharon they shall see the glory of the lord and the excellency of our god verse 3 it says strengthen ye the weak hands it says and confirm the feeble knees verse 4 say to them who are of a fearful heart be strong fear not behold your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. As a result, then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. The Bible paints a picture of what can happen to a person and an environment when the power of God is introduced. Many believers have not been trained to see the value of spiritual empowerment. For many believers, spiritual empowerment is, is, is an elective that you choose if you are interested in doing ministry. So if you do not have any passion for ministries or necessary say nuisance, all I need is just the word. 
But the word did not make any meaning until the word was empowered. You are not a blessing until you are empowered spiritually. You read from Genesis to Revelation. There was no one who had capacity to do God good without God anointing him. God will make a man Build that man. Teach that man the systems of the kingdom. And then when all is said and done, among the many things, he will grant access to his anointing. I hope you know that God's power, God's anointing, is not the same anointing that God works with, is what he gives you. So that your possibilities can match. Because man does not have in himself the capacity to produce God's dimension of results. If it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. If it's not marvelous, it was your doing. You don't clap for me for walking. It's human to walk. There's nothing supernatural as it were about walking. But when you begin to manifest a dimension not given to men, it proves that there was an energy that was outsourced. No one was allowed to serve in the temple without empowerment. No matter how silly the responsibility was, you needed empowerment. No matter how skilled you were, every time God would call a man, out of whatever it is that he does, they must be empowered. Including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her carrying Jesus for nine months did not empower her. She had to join the 120 to wait until the spirit was it not the same spirit that put jesus in her womb but that did not empower her the bible is full of stories of people who were absolutely weak their humanity was so glaring but not for too long at a point in their life and in their experience they had a strange encounter with the spirit of the living then they were anointed and things turn around in their lives. There is no man of God who can produce God's dimension of results and be a blessing. Just being a wonderful, humane human being. There has to be a translation by the power of God. Are we together? It is very, very important. Zechariah chapter 4, please. And verse 6. The prophet is speaking here. Zechariah 4. And verse 6, then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of God unto Joshua Selman, saying, Not by might, human strength, nor by human power, but it is by my spirit. Excelling in your business, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Doing the kind of ministry that will bring glory to Jesus, not by might, nor by power. Getting a job, not by mouth, nor by power. Being favored, not by might, nor by power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Breaking a chain that was there before you were born. There were people stronger than you. That chain kept them there. It is not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit. You must learn early to give up on the strength of the flesh. It will embarrass you and continue to recycle pain to your life. For by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. When a spirit is oppressing you, there is no machine that will diagnose it. Machines don't diagnose spirit. They diagnose the effect of their presence. But there is a word that is a discerner. is sharper than any two-edged sword. In Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy, we know this theologically to be, it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, in other words, this is the object, the motive, the motivation behind that. He hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. Then he says, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim liberty to the captives the opening of the prison to them that are bound every time i read this scripture when i get to that prison part it touches me who are these men in prison because they still walk around yet the bible says they are not only tied they are in prison to open the prison to them that are bound verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Then to comfort all them that mourn. Three. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Look at this. You can give a man beauty. You can say, bring your ashes. I will change it for you. Like you tell somebody, bring dollars. I will give you naira. You actually can be anointed to see a man's life. You are not praying now and say God change his life. It is within my power. There is an agency that can turn your life around. That men can receive something from heaven that stops them from being human. You can look at a man with ashes, my brothers and my sisters. And within your power, according to the measure of grace, you look at that man and say, bring these ashes. I want to give you beauty. Like an award, like an exchange. And you say, go, you've had beauty. He will doubt it until his result shows. He steps out of that place. And all of a sudden, the scenario of his change, and all this begin to change. And all that he sees is the glory of God. To give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Look how men can become blessings to men. That something can come upon your life. When you see men mourning, you don't counsel, you don't sympathize. You tell them, I see you wearing a garment. It's only expressed in your tears. Let me take that garment away. And you can give them a garment of praise. That they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. God wants to be glorified through the empowerment of the saints. Please listen to me. It takes spiritual power to reign. It takes more than good intention. It takes more than good preaching. It takes more than a sincere heart. The days that we live in are evil days. Jesus himself revealed to us that there is something called the hour of darkness. The hour of darkness. Psalm 63. The value showing you and then we'll tie up a few things and pray tonight. You must desire sincerely the power of God. Oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. In my flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Why am I seeking you? To see thy power and thy glory in my life as i have seen in the sanctuary lord i'm seeking you there is there are things around my life that i know only your power can answer i've tried to use human wisdom i've tried to use certain things but i know that i need to outsource an ability that is higher than me ah, happy is the man who is trusted with god's power you will watch life come under obedience to Christ. But when you are not empowered, you can watch your family members go through the things that happen. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You see, everything that happens in our lives can be likened to movie actors. Behind every movie, I don't, I don't do movie, but at least I know a little about it. That when you are acting a movie or drama, there's someone called a director, correct? You may never have the privilege of seeing him. He is at the back scheming things. What you watch is the action, but there is a director. 
you slap this one twice. No, no. According to my script, you should slap him three times. That means that behind the various scenarios of our lives, there are systems and spirits orchestrating it. The disfavor, the closed door, the unnecessary hardship, the lack of church growth regardless of grace. We focus many times on the events. The events are like probabilities. They are infinite. Behind every one of them are these spirits. And the Bible says, how all inspiring are your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I once counseled an elderly man, very old man, and while I sat down listening to him, he barely spoke and he started crying. And I said, sir, just talk to me, what is the issue? And then he told me that all through his life, he has not known what people call victory. That this thing they call victory is strange to him. It's like a man being pregnant. He says, I, I, I don't know anything about victory. I said, why? He said he was never taught some of these things. And he was angry because his life refused to change. This kingdom is a kingdom where in many cases it is the power of God that speaks. And until the power of God speaks like the roaring of a lion, some challenges will not let you go. Please listen very carefully. I shared with you in this place, Koinonia, about a woman who was pregnant one time. And then this woman would go to bed and literally see monkeys all around her, Pastor. Monkeys. And she gave birth to a child and the child came out hairy physically like a monkey, dead. How many people have been prayed for here with HIV? Ask them how they got it. They said they came to me in a dream with an injection. Said this is HIV. Injected you in the realm of the spirit and it appeared physically. That means you can change something in the realm of the spirit and then wait for it like a movie too to happen physically. If it started in the realm of the spirit, it must be adjusted there. It doesn't make sense to come from the realm of the spirit and then you adjust it physically. Some things will never change with counseling. Hear me? Some things will never change with time. Some things will never change with advice. You will need a head-on collision with the power of God. There are families where nobody has risen to any level. The last person who tried to rise there because of the little revelation here and there that he got, when he was almost crossing, it drew him back. Power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus knew the necessity of this. He said, tarry in Jerusalem. Don't make a mistake of leaving Jerusalem to start anything without empowerment. I've given you the lecture, but all that lecture will be nonsense if there is no power. I just gave you theory, but what you are going to be seeing there, oh dear, had they not listened to Jesus, you would meet a man called Bar Jesus. You would meet a young girl who was a sorcerer, and she will show you word of knowledge that you had not seen. Listen, let me tell you. The world that is out there is not exactly ignorant. It's just that the knowledge is demonic and diabolic. You know, many times when we teach like this, even me, I get uncomfortable sometimes because everything I say looks like a lie except that it is true. Hmm. It is true. It is true. Bishop Oyedepo gave a story that one time the church would not grow for a long time, regardless of the prayers that were offered. And then they were fasting just like this. Lord, why is the church not growing? And according to him, he said, the spirit of the Lord asked him to go out. And then he checked and saw that there was a blindfold over that ministry. 
and he caused it in the name of Jesus and it rolled like a curtain. From that time, increase began to come. There are people, every good thing you do is misunderstood. It's not normal. Her man was begging. The king called it rape. There are spirits that make good things evil. You come for somebody's program to help him. They say, uh -huh, they have come. You don't come and they say, ah, something is wrong. It's a spirit. Let me tell you, when the devil wants to track you down, only God can deliver you. Because anything you do will lead to the same result. They box Jesus with a question that both yes and no will put him in trouble. It was not the issue of answering correctly or not. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God. Listen, let me tell you. There are many things you have discussed. It's time to bring them face to face with God's power. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power for exploits in the kingdom and that by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. This is what happened to Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost but not with power. And when he was done fasting, the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. This conference would not have done us justice if it leaves us with just information without power. It takes power to change your situation. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life. Just because God said it does not mean it will happen. There is an energy, there is an agency behind. He says his divine power has given us. His word authorizes his power to move. The power will not move until the word authorizes it. But when the word authorizes it and the power is not there, it will still be of non-effect. The dynamics of manifestation is this. Listen, it is not just the union of the word and the power alone. It is that the word is what gives authority. And then the power is what manifests physically to create the change. God's energy, God's ability. Turning people's lives around. Changing people's situations. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed, don't get too used to these scriptures, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about as a result of the power doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. This is a generation that needs the power of God. There are so many things that continue to challenge believers. We need a manifestation of the power of God. In one day, the issue of loyalty to God was settled when power came. Elijah said, let's stop arguing. Go up the mountain. Let's go to Mount Carmel. That the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And then he gave the prophets of Baal room to begin to do everything that they were doing. The Bible says from morning up until night. Do you know the highest dimension of their prayer was sacrifice? When everything failed, they started cutting themselves. He said, pray louder. Maybe he's sleeping. And Baal could not answer them. And then when it was the time of the evening sacrifice, there was a time. When the angel of the Lord will come to the earth. Angels are not on the earth just all the time. They will respond to prayers. But there are activities on earth that make for the manifestation of the angelic.
Do you know how Haman got the date to destroy Israel? I hope you know there was a date. Haman did not just say to destroy God's people carelessly. Through divination, a spiritual permutation was done and the exact date was there. That means every day is not conducive for everything. This is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Haman, through divination, found out the exact day. The same way there are divine appointments, there are also appointments of darkness. I heard a man of God share a very touching story. And when I heard that story, it really, really blessed me. He said there was a lady who was about to travel. She missed her flight. She felt so bad and cried that he, she missed her flight. Only for her to find out about maybe a, a few hours ago that the plane crashed. The family members were perplexed when they published the names of the people. The name of the daughter was not there. And they said, so what happened? She missed the flight and so she went to a train. The train still crashed. Those kinds of people are appointed to die. So it doesn't matter whether it's through plane or through this. The devil will haunt you until what happens, happens. Just when you think you are done with one breakthrough here, yeah, is something else. But then it says to appoint unto them that mourn. The same way that you can put a date to a man's breakthrough and call it today. You can call something that should happen next week and give it a date today by the anointing. Samaria was never supposed to be delivered. The prophet gave the date for the deliverance. It was, he, listen, Elisha was not revealing something that would happen anyway and maybe he was just privy to an advanced information. No. He said, by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, if he didn't say it, the tomorrow will come and the cry will continue. And they will eat the child, the other child that they were arguing about. Do you know how many people's lives you will save when you are anointed? Do you know how many people you will save from going down the grave? Do you know how many people you will lift for going down the grave? There are many people today in the grave who had no business going there. If you're a minister here, please listen to me. We are in the days of his power. If you lack genuine spiritual power, please leave ministry. Just quietly leave ministry. You can find another ministry and help them. But I'm telling you the days that we live in will require genuine spiritual power. The distinguishing factor will be the power of God. Because people will come with burdens that no level of intelligence can solve. Paul said, and I, when I came to you, he said. Remember, Paul was not a dull man. So he was not trying to trivialize knowledge. He says, but when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. But in the demonstration of power, that your faith may not rest upon the wisdom of man, but upon the power of God. That you carry the power of the Holy Spirit like a drug and enter your house with it. You don't need to pray. Just enter. And all of a sudden, the foundations of your family begins to shake. What is going on in this family? There is a shaking. What dreams are we suddenly having? It's because someone who represents the ark entered that house. Akabaruta siakata. One week after your coming, suddenly three promotions without your prayer. One week after your coming, a strange infirmity that each people in your family gives way. This is proof that God is with you. Let me tell you this. The world is truly tired of our stories. Are we together now? And the impatience continues to grow. We need a generation of men and women, not just preachers. Men and women who understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of you are seated here right now. 
buffeted by all kinds of challenges and for many people they think that the answer to those things maybe is just some nice discussion with an intelligent man of god now there are times that you need the power of god some of you join the queue sometimes to see me and while you are talking i just say it's okay don't worry you are tired. let me explain i said it's okay i know what the problem is no matter what other examples you will give is the same spirit like you tell a doctor the other day i fell down let me tell you the scenario that he said no it's epilepsy he said no let me tell you he said i found a problem he said, even if you say you fell from a bridge it's still epilepsy it's working in me it's working in me it's god's ability god's ability it's working in me it's working in me it's god's ability This is why we are gathered tonight this is why we continue to press listen joshua selman cannot be in every home joshua selman cannot be in every office joshua selman cannot be in every school joshua selman cannot be everywhere there is a problem if he's everywhere You are supposed to be an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom within the region that you are in that means that when someone from the regions you have come from is contemplating and say ah i should come for koinonia but maybe i'm challenged financially and the rest you say i bring you good news that which is there is here here by the spirit he said this is that 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 the prophet spoke about this is it again this is that what is the problem i've been trying to see a puzzle why because things are not working in my family and then one word one word from you will open the gates this is what god is making and it has nothing to do with being a man of god or a woman of god by the time you carry the grace for favor and someone just comes and shakes you good morning sir and he thought he just shook a man and then he leaves and for that day he records breakthroughs in his life he will look for you and say please shake me again i don't know what you did i don't know what happened but you are like the ark of god in the house of obed edom it was dropped there just to let it be under the care of obed edom and in three months 90 days the life of a man changed because something was introduced Jonah carried a spirit into a boat and people were about to die. Jonah didn't pray. Jonah didn't preach. Jonah didn't talk. He was even sleeping. You don't have to be awake for grace to walk. Jonah was sleeping. Yet the anointing was walking. That you can turn a man's life around by the spirit bringing glory to the name of the lord as an evidence a testament of the power of god but ye shall receive power Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 after that the holy ghost is come upon you you shall receive power not stories power I'm a businessman. Yes, sir. Power. I'm a politician. Yes, sir. You need more power as a politician than a preacher. A preacher has prayer ban. A politician does not have it. They can cover for you before you go for a retreat. But you are a politician. They hit you once you are gone. Listen very carefully. 
Let me tell you, we are living in evil days. It is true. And you must sustain the stamina, the spiritual stamina, the empowerment. How about wealth and increase? Remember the teaching that I did. That you want to prosper and even your soul to prosper. The devil says, no way. You choose one. You can't have both. Either your soul prospers or your pocket prospers. And you say, no, in God's economy, we prosper as our souls prosper. You don't sell your soul to prosper. The world's way is that you sell your soul to prosper. That was the exchange that was happening at the mountain. Give me your soul. What shall it profit? When it talks of profit, the commodity of exchange is a man's soul and the world. Like pure water and hundred naira. What shall it profit you? If you use this to buy this. The world, soul. Trade by butter. Give me your soul. I will give you access to the cosmos. Is God speaking to someone? Let me tell you something. It takes the force of God's power for things to change. The force of God's power. And yesterday we spoke about one of the keys. Let me just talk very briefly. One area and then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We spoke about one area. Death. If you remember very carefully. That the price is death. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Thank you, my dear. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. My son, first instruction, give me your heart. We dealt with that yesterday. So we're switching to the next one. And let thine eyes observe my way. He's teaching a man a secret here. Your eyes, your heart. Your eyes, your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. Listen to me. It's an anthem in this ministry that there is a relationship between your spiritual understanding and the manifestation of spiritual power. You know, most times people say there is power in the word of God. And it's not a lie. But the dynamic, most people do not understand. They think that the word of God is just like a charm or a genie. And the moment you have it or recite it, it has power. No. No. In the parable of the sower, Satan came and carried the word. And he was not shaking. He didn't die. He carried the word. Only God knows where he went with it. When Jesus finished fasting, the word finished fasting, Satan appeared and was talking to the word with power on him. He didn't shake under the anointing. He even held Jesus and took him to a mountain. He held the word with power on it. That the word of God can be made of non-effect. There is a system that releases the power of the word. Are we together now? The word of God is a compendium of his ways, his methodology, his systems. Hidden in the systems, when you understand and engage accordingly, then you release the power that lies therein. This is very, very important. For most people, we just think that the word of God is in the recitation of it like a memory verse. Or in the chanting of it like a charm. You know how traditionalists will chant something in front of a masquerade. No. No. The sons of Sceva were speaking what would be in the similitude of scripture. But the demons did not leave. You have to understand this. And let your eyes observe my ways. That means that every part I walk is a pattern you should pay attention to. Observe my ways, how restoration came. Observe my ways, how speed came. Observe my ways, why Satan could not defeat me. He said, be observant. Before you speak, ponder, sila, think by the wisdom of the spirit. Obtain grace and understanding to discern. 
you can successfully replace the word observe there with the word discern. Discern my ways. We came from the same background. What did you do that suddenly brought favor? Observe my ways. There was something I did that the natural eyes cannot see. We were born the same day. What has happened to you that you have such an investment of the spirit? Observe my ways. When you give me your heart, observe my ways. My path are the paths of pleasantness. Observe my ways. There is a way that cement writes, the Bible says, unto a man. It says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way, the authorized methodology for results. It is my path. When you follow it, the results are guaranteed. The primary assignment of any man of God, after getting people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, is to stimulate spiritual enlightenment and understanding by opening them to the ways of God. The methodology, the modus operandi. Please listen very carefully. Things don't just work because they are written in the Bible. Things don't just work because God said they should work. Behind his speakings are his systems. Listen to me. Beyond words, you have to see the lines that connect. This is where the spirit of revelation, of wisdom, and of understanding comes. You have to pray for understanding. The utopian Enoch had his Bible open. He was just coming from church on a chariot on his way to go back home. And the spirit of the Lord took Philip and says to join that chariot. And then he even saw that he was reading the messianic prophecy. He said, who is this man? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Was it he more about someone? He says, understandest what thou readest. How can I accept some man teach me? And then he began to explain. To make all men see. There is a grace that as the exegesis of scripture is as the bread is broken, your eyes suddenly see. This is it. This is where my family is. I've seen it. The word of God becomes for you like a compass. It shows you where you are and where you need to be. And when you have eaten and found it, it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to your soul. Behind the results that we seek. It's not only the word of God. But an understanding of the system allocated for it. Please listen to me. Just because the anointing produced result in an area. Does not mean it will produce result in an area. The anointing flow through the channel of your understanding to produce that result. And so the same anointing will be profitless if you are barren of spiritual understanding. Imagine with me for a moment that you have a tap that has potentials to gush out a lot of water. And then you have a host. You can use it and you can guarantee that a garden will be watered. What waters the garden is not the host. But without the host, the water will not reach the garden. That host is your understanding. That is the basis of your faith. Faith is the confidence that you get based on God and the integrity of his word and the action you take to validate that confidence. It comes through understanding. Understanding is a real miracle. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. And he breathed upon them. He opened their understanding. We need to have a lot of understanding for the results that we seek to command. And I have dished mysteries upon mysteries in this kingdom. One of the strange mystery, the mystery of praise, the secret to exemption. Aye. Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed. There is a kind that goeth by praise. There is a kind that goeth by fasting. There are many kinds. There are dynamics of their operation. And the Bible says Paul and Silas after praying, they praise. And it says all doors open. Not some. All doors open. 
praise can open doors. That a man can, he says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. We've had testimonies in this house where people will lock themselves and write challenges that only God can solve. And sing praises and dance like fools in the presence of that request. And by morning, God will say, you can't do this for me. Was it not a girl's dance that removed a prophet's head? What Jezebel could not do, Herodias, the daughter, did it in a dance. Dance during a man's birthday. He said, what will you want? Even to half of my kingdom. Consulted with her evil and wicked mother. Who said, remove the head of that prophet. And his head went for it. Do you know the mysteries allocated for the results that you seek? Praise. 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 In a dance. Not in a complaint. Praise. In a dance. Ah, madam. You're going to lose this pregnancy. From what we are seeing, there is problem. Praise. In a dance. Your certificate, everywhere you have taken for a job, they say, sorry, sir, it's too late. Sorry, you are too old. Sorry, you are too young. Sorry, it's women we are looking for. You are a man. Sorry, it's men we are looking for. You are a woman. Sorry, we are looking for Yoruba people. What tribe? I'm Hausa. Sorry, it's Northerners we are looking for. You carry that thing and bring it before God. And say, where is the God of Israel? Where is my job, oh God? Let my dance bring it. You can dance like someone in a bar. There's no miracle for that one. But you can dance the dance with understanding. Lord, I'm dancing before the God who can change my life. I'm dancing before the one who has all power. How about the mystery of prayer? God's authorized system of legislature over a territory. You don't legislate by discussion. No. No. When you want to enforce the value system of God over a spiritual climate, the mechanism allocated for that is prayer. You fortify a spiritual border through the ministry of prayer. He spake a parable. Are you learning something now? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. The mystery that gives you direction over affliction is prayer. It's in prayer that you understand what is going on. You don't pray after you have understood what is happening. Whatever you understand can be aberrated by your pain. It is prayer that purifies the revelation. Is any man afflicted? Not let him understand. Let him pray. Lord, I don't know what is happening, but let prayer filter this thing. And you lock yourself and while you are praying, suddenly the maze, the purity of the revelation comes to you. When it was time for Esther to deliver the people, she said, set yourself, Israel, fast. I will also fast with you as I go to the king. It was a matter of life and death. There are mysteries in this kingdom. One of it is the mystery of your seed. Ah, the mystery of your seed. Now, I know that it may have been abused here and there, but very few believers understand the power of, of seed faith. It's not just some Pentecostal gibberish to collect money out of people. Whoever manipulates people, he has God there to judge him. But let me tell you, there are times you are tired of a dimension and you can connect a seed to your faith huh? and smash every Goliath down to pieces with your faith. Seeds have worked wonders in my life. Seeds have worked wonders in this ministry. There was a year I've shared with you where God gave an instruction to sow everything to empty every money in this ministry. Everything. That's suicidal for a man of God to do. Very suicidal. If your ministry is just a prayer group, you can afford that risk. Because whatever it is, the people will understand. And with careless, reckless abandonment, we did that. 
And in one week, it didn't pass seven days. God did a wonder that till forever will not recover from. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, a time will come when you have to keep quiet and let your speed continue speaking. It's a mystery in the spirit. The prophetic is a mystery that you engage under certain circumstances. Every time the Bible talks of restoration, it does not talk of anything other than the prophetic. Read your Bible. Every time there was a loss in the Bible, it was the ministry of the prophetic that brought it back. Whether it was the axe head, whether it was the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, no matter what it was, the moment the prophetic came, then there would be restoration. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Is God speaking to you tonight? So every challenge that we have, that we stand with tonight, is at the mercy of the power of God, but released through the host of your understanding. Listen to me. It's not just about power, power fall on me. Mm -mm. When power falls on you, it's the same thing like splashing water everywhere. It must be coordinated through understanding to be channeled to the area where the results are needed. Just wanting power at random without understanding is the same way you fetch water and just throw it everywhere and expect it to coordinate itself into your mouth. There is a cup that fetches that water and it doesn't go to your head, it doesn't go to your legs. You direct it where that water needs to go. When you are bathing, even if it's a shower, you don't stand anywhere and it touches you. You position the water. It is not water board's assignment to know where your head is or to know where your face is or to know where the soap is. It's their assignment to release water. It's your assignment to work with your plumber and make sure that water is in a position that can get to every part of your body. So the situation happening with you in that bathroom, the water board is not aware. There was something about the way you turned the whole thing and it's not reaching you. Understanding gives value to power. Most people have power, but they don't have understanding. So it cannot be coordinated to produce results. We like power because of the charismatism that comes around it. But the efficiency of the power of God is produced on the platter of understanding. There's water in a well. Please help me with this. Look at this. Every well has water. But you don't stand in front of a well and bend your head down to drink it. You do that, you are going to fall down and die. The water that was supposed to bless you is now the reason for your death. But the water was packaged in a bottle. And the bottle, the person that designed this bottle designed it to enter your mouth. That's why this is not where you drink from. Are we together? He looked at the size of your mouth and made sure that the bottle will be able to enter there. Now the water can benefit you because the channel gave it coordination. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are many people, what you may need may not be more power. Truly the power is resident within you. But understanding is what will give it, will channel it accordingly to produce the breakthrough that you need. And I have seen this again and again with many believers. They are not knowledgeable on spiritual things. They lack spiritual intelligence and yet they want the power of God. The divine power of God is like electricity. But you channel it to do the things for you that it wants to do. Trying to receive fresh air from a keyboard is not profitable. Yet it's the same power that powers a keyboard that powers this. So I must understand the dynamics of his conversion. To know if I want fresh air, it's a fan I look for. It's still the same divine power. It is the same divine power. But sometimes it is not expressed in prayer. It's expressed in a dance. 
Sometimes it's not just expressed in a dance, it's expressed in agreement. Sometimes it's not just expressed in agreement, it's expressed as you quote scripture and speak to the air. Sometimes it is expressed through submitting to a prophetic grace. Regardless of the dimensions, it is still his divine power that makes for that result. Listen to this. Tomorrow is our miracle service. And many of you see the things that happen in the miracle service. And sometimes you wonder, why do you have to do this? There are times that I may call on specific people and minister. And then at the same time, minister to everybody over the same case again. You see, it is his divine power. But the system of operation, there are others. Until the worship team raises a song, they will not be blessed. The nature of their challenges will require worship. The power of God will flow through the instrument of worship. There are certain people that God's divine power will flow through creativity. When it has to do with wealth, his divine power does not flow through the channel of prayer. So if all you know is prayer, you will heal the sick but remain poor. His divine power is trapped by your bankruptcy of knowledge. You must give his power channels to flow through understanding the more you have spiritual understanding the more you are giving his divine power channels to flow to the various faculties of your life it matters that we have understanding i am powerful i don't doubt you but show me the understanding and i see how far the power can go my understanding is limited to the healing ministry that is the only area you will see the power of God. You will continue to fast and more power will come. But it will be directed towards that area. The day you learn the economic principle of the kingdom, you will see the power released there. It was always there, but your bankruptcy of understanding trapped it. Please get what I'm teaching you. It will not do us much to just pray and pray and do impartation. And then the area where you are trusting God for, maybe it's area of speed and promotion. But the only spiritual understanding you have is for restoration. The more you pray, the more you see things being restored. But promotion, you will not get it. And you wonder, God, can't you promote? He says, my power wants to move to the area of your promotion. But the host call understanding that would direct it is barren, unfruitful. Where that light came from was the hiding place of his power. I learned this in life and it changed my life. There were things I didn't know. And I didn't see the power of God in those areas. And for a long time I would pray and fast and say, God, why? Until the Lord granted me understanding to know that the issue was not more power. The issue was the bankruptcy of spiritual enlightenment. That will give it more capacity. Is God speaking to you? Hmm. Imagine with me an octopus. Right? That sea creature with many channels. That's how God wants your understanding to be. His divine power should not only touch your finances alone. It should not only touch this aspect. Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I believe with all my heart that there is enough power and grace to produce what you are looking for. Connect that power through your understanding to the problem you are looking for solution from. If what you want is restoration... Then use the understanding of the prophetic to channel the power of God to that direction. If you keep praying and God has mercy on you, he will bring a prophet to help you. That's his way of having mercy on you. But he will not violate the system allocated for that breakthrough. Are we together? You want to be promoted in a job. The power of God will not only flow through favor, it will flow through competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, not prayerful in his business, diligent in his business. He says, she shall stand before kings. 
there is power in diligence so when you become diligence a dimension of god's power that never flowed will now start flowing through diligence if you understand what i'm sharing tonight you will see the knowledge dimension the understanding dimension of the power of god otherwise there is no need for knowledge when the anointing comes what then is the value of spiritual enlightenment if the anointing just generically solves problems why should you anoint me with oil then i study the bible again what am i looking for i know what i'm looking for i'm giving that grace channels ah those who you call wonders when you see them they are not like an octopus they are like an animal with many many hosts so almost every area of their life can be touched with understanding and the power of God. You see possibilities. That's what we came to do tonight. First, to receive more grace. But second, to say, Lord, this side has received your anointing. But this side, I'm trying to get this thing there. It's not working. What is the mystery that channels the power of God to this other area? Naaman was the king and the captain of the Syrian army. He was a valiant man. His discipline and diligence as a military man allowed certain levels of might to flow. But, but, if he knew that the prophetic would solve his problem, he would not be a leper till that time. It was because there was an information he did not know that kept him there. So God used a small slave girl to say, sir, there is a way out of this. Ah, tell somebody there is a way. Please prophesy to someone. Say there is a way. It may not yet be captured in your curriculum of knowledge. But there is a way. There is a way. Do not use your limitation to conclude that God cannot move in that area. Because he can. Because he can. Because he can. Everything God says. Listen to me. Listen to me. When he releases it, the spirit of revelation will take that prophecy and the power in it and ensure that you have the understanding that connects you to that prophecy. This is how it works. This is how it works. So the more spiritually enlightened I am, it is not the enlightenment that produces results. The enlightenment activates my mind and gives the power of God a channel to flow through. Listen to me. Medical people will tell us many times that when a part of the body is beginning to deteriorate, sometimes it could be that there was a pinched nerve. Is that true? Sometimes it could be that something happened. That is not allowing blood to flow. Because the distribution is that blood should flow all over your body. But for some reason, the heart is still pumping blood. But something may happen to your vein or your artery or something. And just try to create an interference, an inhibition. And for a long time, a part of your body will not receive the supply of oxygen and blood. And as a result, it begins to die. The heart is pumping, but that leg is dying. So it is the doctor's assignment through his knowledge to now create a system. And sometimes the relief is instant. Hmm. This is how it works. We went for a crusade many years ago. Anointed but poor. Yet his divine power was on us. That power was healing the sick. But the police station was waiting for us. Are we together? Couldn't the power stop the police station? It could. Except that the knowledge we needed to allow it get to our finances. It was not there. And then by the mercies of God, he brought that side. Look, when light comes to you, it's a miracle. When light comes to you, now the power of God can flow through you. Let me tell you why certain people's results become very powerful. There are many people who may not have the level of anointing yet, but while they are waiting, they continue to get vast knowledge. It's like you are preparing the host in advance. The day that anointing comes, 
miracles in different areas because they were prepared i've not met a man of god that can anoint me but while i wait what is the key to wealth while i wait what is the key to speed while i wait so everything is prepared waiting for the oil to come why did he tell the woman borrow vessels borrow many borrow a financial vessel borrow a speed vessel borrow a, a favor vessel borrow a restoration vessel if you return pour the oil the oil will come on the speed vessel the oil will come on this vessel you see and when there was no more vessel the oil not died not changed not became powerless the oil limited by the containers the prophet saw the woman he said your husband didn't know what this oil could do even as a prophet and he died you can be a prophet but when you don't have vessels you can die please tell me we are going to pray i came with a word from god to tell you by the grace of god this is a place of god's power but power just resting you can roll from that door to that door and the power will be there and the only channel you gave that power was your prayer life so you will see increased prayer you are praying again like never before and you are saying but god thank you for the grace for prayer but i said that i want something in my family and then you fast again and then more prayer comes and then when god wants to help you he will do to you what he did to martha sit down and listen look at how jesus do you know jesus did not do an impartation service every day but he did a teaching service his entire training was 99 percent teaching and then one day when they had created channels he said now with the holy ghost hallelujah when the holy ghost came on them they prophesied there was word of knowledge there was salvation there was healing because the channels were ready my son give me your heart and observe my ways observe my ways observe why two people were anointed and yet they could not manifest certain possibilities this kingdom works through knowledge the knowledge is not a charm the dynamics of the operation is that every result is governed by his divine power but his divine power flows through the host of understanding the prophets desire to know some things the power that was on them was enough to help them do certain things but they were denied god stopped them and limited them by hiding certain levels of knowledge so the anointing could not take them far to see some things that's why god says we are a chosen generation in other words people the prophets long to see these things they had the power but the understanding that will allow the power take them that far was not there man of god my church is not growing yet people come and get healed I'm blessed through my life and they leave me. It is because his divine power is working through the dimension of understanding you have that allows for healing and allows for deliverance. But there is something about the grace that keeps that you do not know. All that you have given me, I have kept. By what mystery did he keep them? And none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture may be fulfilled. There is a grace that keeps. If you have it, you will keep money. If you have it, you will keep children. If you have it, you will keep blessings. If you do not know the mystery that keeps things, you will have them and lose them. You can have breakthrough and lose breakthrough. You can have good things and leave them. Apostle, every time they pray, I get the result. But it leaves after two weeks. I know what is wrong. His divine power is still there. But there is an understanding you need to know about how things can be kept. Let me tell you how you keep things in the kingdom. You hand them over to God. 
when you hand over things to God, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. You can't keep that which is committed to you by your power. If they give you a bag of gold, you are running to Central Bank tomorrow. Whether the road is, is busy or not, you will smuggle your gold and run regardless of weather. CB and keep it for me. I trust my may God, but not with respect to this gold. Please understand what I teach you. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray. For many years, I continue to ask, why are anointed people limited? I got one of the revelations that the anointing is in decrease and levels. And the anointing, just like currency, can only purchase the spiritual realities below its value. Every level of grace has a spiritual value akin to money. What one million will do is not what hundred thousand will do. If what you have is hundred thousand, you can only buy things from hundred thousand and below. If it's a card, you will not even buy hundred thousand. He must keep something small. So if all the anointing you have is to help people be healed, some can have ten problems. Come, Sam. Look at this. Please um, sit down. We're going to pray. Let me teach you something. Let me have your attention. Please look. You have to get this thing I'm teaching you now. Look at this. Sam has headache. Just as an, an example. Sam has headache. Are we together? Poverty. Number two. Number three. Delay. Are we together? Number four is what? Huh? Demonic oppression. Now, I come as a man of God. Sam lists all these problems. When I lay hands on Sam, watch this now. The level of anointing I have will scan through the problems and only the situations that are below the level of anointing that will be solved. He may fall, but you will find out that when he rises up, only headache will be healed. The rest will not be touched because the level of grace. Anointing is not anointing. It's a lie. Go and read your Bible. How God anointed not just that he anointed. So the level of the anointing can make your challenges relative or otherwise. I used to think anointing is anointing. It just came from the Holy Spirit. Not so, sir. Not so. There are levels, there are dimensions of the anointing. And then when I grow further, I can now come to Sam again. And I said, Sam, what couldn't I solve last year? He said, sir, I listed five cases. Only headache went. I said, well, I've come back with an upgrade. Let's try it again. I lay hands on Sam and suddenly a miracle alert will enter. And all this will enter. But that delay will not be solved. So you are a blessing when you are very anointed. So anointed that most of the cases that come to you, there is grace to solve it. Listen, let me tell you this. I can tell you this from experience as a man of God. There are, there are situations I know that the grace that God has put on my life is by far higher than that situation. That's why when I see people come with that thing, I don't even bother wasting time to pray for them. I say, go, it's done. It's within the liberty of my grace to produce that solution. But there are cases that when I see sometimes, I know that I've met a match for my grace. And I need to return back to the secret place. Because when God wants to lift you, he brings people with serious issues. Lord, add church members. Then he brings someone deaf on both ears. And who is not even smelling. He stands before you. Can you hear? No, even small. Not at all. You pray for him. He falls down. He wakes up richer, but not healed. Because the grace that you released was for wealth. Are you seeing why balance is powerful? It's true. I used to 
used to wonder why Kenneth Hagin will have meetings, 21 day stretch, and sick people will come. Sometimes he will not pray for some. He will leave them like that. He will continue studying and growing. One day, he will come back and say, you, come. And that will be it. I now know what he was doing. He was honest with himself. He had a system of gauging. Was he not, was he not Jesus and even the disciples that will discern whether this situation is doable by me? If it was not doable, the one called certain apostles, they were not ashamed. When it has to do with this one, <clears throat> I'm still growing. Please, come. So the disciples pray for an epileptic patient in the name of Jesus. And nothing happened. And Jesus came and said, I know the problem. Two problems. One, the level of anointing is not there. Almost not there. Number two, your spiritual understanding. Because you saw me heal the sick effortlessly. I casted out the devil out of the gathering. But this kind goeth not. He was introducing them. That there is a level where prayer and fasting will introduce a kind of power to you. That will help you do certain things. I've shared a revelation with you. That every time people fast and pray. It's like a spiritual energy. It's like fire that rises from within them. Do you know what that fire does? I will tell you. When a spirit leaves a man, it goes through desert regions. It's in your Bible, isn't it? And when it goes through desert regions, it becomes uncomfortable because a desert is a hot place. And it compares the desert to the body it left. If the body is colder than the desert, it will prefer to return back to the body. So that when a man begins to engage spiritual energy and that fire burns within you, by yourself, that spirit will leave you. The Bible lets us know that anything in the similitude of fire is uncomfortable for spirits. That's why they like water. That's why water is a major part of their habitation. Because there is restfulness there. He makes me lie down in still waters. We are going to pray. The power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. But this night we must cry for understanding. Understanding understanding we will pray for higher dimensions of power but superior dimensions of sight and understanding rise up on your feet please thank the lord for the word you just heard tonight lift your voice and thank him lift your voice and give him praise we are praying Is someone lifting their voices? I found my way to a higher level. I found my way greater power. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Shala pragadi balada balada ba. Shala pakaruta sada bradikatash. Karuda sene makora de shi anabalanaba.
Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, fill this temple with your presence. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, na Fill this temple. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. prayer points. Number one, Lord, quicken my understanding. Quicken my understanding. Grant me access to light, spiritual illumination, a comprehension of your methodologies. Tired of guessing, tired of shadow boxing, tired of hoping, Are you praying? Shalabarakatos. We are still praying. Look up, please. Hallelujah. Listen. Mention the area where you need a miracle and say, Lord, what is the understanding that connects your power to that area? Lift your voice and pray. Mention the area. Lord, I desire breakthrough. I desire a job. I desire the spirit of revelation. I desire increase in ministry. What is the mystery? What is the key that will allow your power to be channeled in that area? Please pray. Shamarakato se prege de balaraba. Embragatali katabaras. show me oh God like Naaman a great captain of the Syrian army but what is the cure for this leprosy revealed to me by your spirit there is a way there is a way there is a way there is a path which no town has seen the whelps of the lion has not gotten there Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. 
Listen. Please look at me, believers. If you are a pastor here, listen to me. That is why communion service is not powerful. Because most people think it's about sobo and wafa. So they said, eat the bread and swallow the, the drink. And then they smile. No. When you understand the power, you will not even be able to hold the communion set. Understanding. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There is more to it. You have done it the way you saw it. There is more to it. We are still going to pray. Father, I'm crying to you. Let my eyes draw a line between your word, my eyes, and my situation. Connect something. Show me a key. Connect a mystery. By the Spirit. I need speed in my life. Open down my eyes. I need restoration in my life. Open down my eyes. I don't doubt your power. My understanding is limiting your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm be very sensitive. Listen. This is why many of you, even after an encounter, nothing happens. Then you go and buy some books and sit with them and then get up and see results. No new impartation happened. In that book, there was a new host that connected a new channel for the power to flow. For a long time, you've been anointed, but you wonder why good things leave you. And then suddenly, the law of honor comes to you. You learn that honor is a law, and that when you honor graces, it gives you access. From the lens of that understanding, you will start seeing the power that brings favor flow. I don't have to pray for you for fresh grace for favor. Your understanding connected you. The power is at the mercy of which channel of understanding will allow me flow. It's not a different power that brings healing. That is a different power that brings miracles. It's the same divine power. But the system of operation is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. Understanding. These are mysteries about the anointing that are found by the spirit. Questions that I asked for many years. What is the relationship between knowledge and understanding? Because some people choose knowledge. The word. The word. Other people choose anointing. Power. And I said, Lord, there, there's confusion here. I need you. And God said, no, there's no confusion, sir. The word gives you understanding. The power flows through your understanding. Representing the might of Jesus. In the face of your situations. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Prayer point number two. Some of you have understanding already. But like something can happen from the water board. How many of you have seen that because your house is uphill. Even when they bring water. Have you seen that kind of thing? You open, you turn the knob to the last. And it just comes in droplets. And you want to bath, you are in a hurry. So there is something that can help you buy a pumping machine and interface it between waterboard and your house. And when you put that machine and switch it on, suddenly the water can even enjoy your head because of the speed. That's what many of us need to do. A multiplication of the same thing. That I have it all, but Lord, a higher dimension. I have a 1,000 naira worth of anointing. But I have a 1 million naira worth of problem. Upgrade the grace. Upgrade the grace. Lift your voice and pray. There's no doubt. Lord, I'm a prophet. But upgrade the grace. 
have received the anointing for wealth, but upgrade the anointing a higher measure. Please pray. Believe in what you are praying and pray. Pray. Thou anointed my head with oil. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. A higher level of grace, a higher level of anointing, a higher investment of spiritual power for signs, for wonders, extraordinary results, strange results. Acts chapter 19. From verse... 11 there are a class of miracles called special miracles a miracle in itself is spectacular but there are miracles called special miracles and they are wrought by the hands of men not angels God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul read on so that from his body, this is what makes it special. Because the rule is that you have to make contact with the sick. And now from his body were brought to the sick. You had our mother's testimony. Handkerchiefs and aprons and diseases departed. When your handkerchief has a voice, it's a special miracle. Because a handkerchief is not a living thing. Special miracles. It is not everyday anointing that produces special miracles. No. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled. Father, I have seen yesterday's glory. I have seen yesterday's results. But before this fast ends, Lord, shift me to a new level of anointing. I have prophesied. I have seen the sick healed. I spoke to people and their lives changed. A higher dimension. Is someone praying? A higher dimension. I've seen the grace for wealth, but a higher dimension. I've seen the revelatory gifts, the revelatory grace, but a higher dimension. I have seen influence and honor, but a higher dimension. Someone pray. Someone pray. Pray, don't be tired.
Alléluia. Alléluia. Let me share with you something. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We're rounding up. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Please give us from verse 8. We're reading three verses. 8 to 10. For this thing. Listen carefully. I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Let's see how God answered this prayer. This is the prayer of a man who was tired of his situation. Listen to how God is answering a man's prayer. He did his best to handle that situation in his strength. And he could not handle it. Now he's asking God for assistance. And God says, my grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. My grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. If it is strength you want, then it must be in exchange for weakness. If there is no darkness, Nepa is useless. Listen to me. Very, very powerful. If there are no sick people, Dr. Emeka is not needed. Are we together? If you are not thirsty, even if there is a bag, a drum of pure water here, it doesn't matter to you. So he says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Let me tell you what this happens. It's a mystery. Every time a human being becomes weak, something starts happening to the power of God coming to that direction. Listen carefully. Weakness is powerful because it attracts the strength of God. So when you set your soul to fast, as your body begins to become weak, the same spirit there is something about your weakness that is calling the power of God. When Jesus stayed for 40 days, the weaker his body, the more the Holy Spirit saw the need to stay. It's a deep spiritual mystery. Jacob wanted a blessing and God looked at him from head to toe. There was no weakness. He said, how do I help you? I have to touch something. There has to be weakness for my strength to be valuable. The treasure cannot be stored in golden vessels. The fact that the vessel is earthen makes the power comfortable so that the excellency of power might be of God. So when you set your soul to fast, God who allowed fasting knows what food does to the body. Listen carefully. If you don't have this revelation, you will not understand what we are doing tonight. Why are you doing a marathon fast that from Wednesday you are not eating down till Friday? Do you want to kill yourself? What kind of nonsense is this they say? You watch what happens. There is a level you will get to where you will almost want to collapse. Then watch what happens. Suddenly, like the eagle, you will pray and you will be tired. Have you not noticed that there is a switch every time? When you are weak, you want to pray. You plan to pray for three hours. After seven minutes, you are tired. You don't even know how this will happen. But you continue and continue and continue. Later, an agency takes over you. And even three hours, you can't finish. Listen. Listen. The power of God hardly starts things. He allows you to start. And then the power comes. And takes you to the flight. That's what happens. These are very deep spiritual mysteries. So these nights that you are not eating now. Your body is already frustrated. There is a level of life and health. That the body must have. For the mind to work. It's true. When you fast. Your mind also is subject to fasting because your mind feeds off the health of your body that's why when you die your mind does not work so you set your soul to fast every time the nation of israel were about to be overwhelmed by their enemies 
they will keep their weapons down and declare a fast plus goats plus everything while they are in sackcloth and ashes the spirit of god comes through a prophet this is what god is saying and victory comes i besought the lord thrice take this away from me and it seems like there is a strength in myself that is limiting the power of god so i set my soul in the similitude of weakness through fasting and suddenly his power comes and picks you up many of you will be surprised what will happen it's not hunger starvation it's a mystery that's why i said a joy must be set before you to receive the grace to endure you're going to cry for grace the grace that will keep you through my brothers and my sisters listen let me tell you this let me tell you this if you don't learn this technology, you will break down in ministry. You see, when I left this place, I had a meeting till evening. It was when I was done just a few minutes to the program starting. Had to tidy up some other things before coming here. And I've been standing here. You have to learn to exchange your weakness. It's a technology you must learn. You are more powerful than you are. But until you are weak, you will not know. If a terrorist comes here right now and starts chasing everybody, you can run three days without food and you will not be hungry. That ability was always there. But there was a level of weakness that when your body... How do I explain this now, Holy Spirit? Just believe with me that subjecting you through this spiritual discipline is not a ritual of men. My brothers and my sisters, I hate the traditions of men and vain religion that has no power. We will never practice anything in this ministry that does not have power and spiritual significance. He won't stop till your strength looks like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop, till my life looks like him. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. Yeah. God is raising Sons and daughters in this place. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till our lives look like Him. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till my life looks like Him. So, the Bible tells us that we have been blessed. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the challenge now is that as you've always heard me say it here once it is true that we do not seek god because of tea and bread and money and fame and prestige all of these things are not and never will be the basis of loving and seeking god but god so designed this kingdom such that as you genuinely seek him listen very carefully all of these privileges and these blessings because remember he designed them and he designed them to be the support system for your serving him is that true that means that i will serve god effectively if i say i designed something to support you it means that you may you may not necessarily die without it but you will not be effective without it are we together now many believers are getting frustrated and this is the reason my message starts now they are aware because this is the word of god that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places but the frustration is beginning to grow how long do i have to wait how do i know whether something is faith or demonic or that i'm not obeying something because it looks like the time that 
we are waiting for that which has been resident in heavenly places to find expression when a woman gets pregnant she doesn't expect to give birth in two weeks but she also doesn't expect to be pregnant forever is that true she knows that there is a period of conception and she gladly she may not know the particular day the doctors can approximate intelligently but she knows it is around a season that my edd is on the 14th of september plus or minus the doctors will give 14th of september cannot be 6th of march that is demonic are we together that's too far so there is a time period there is an approximation that is the same way with a believer meaning when you start your journey this is you now you are starting your journey you should be able complete you should be able to know that okay by the time i get here what should have been possible in my life everything may not yet experientially be manifest but there should be what i call a token a consolation something that motivates you that i got it right okay i started five years ago praying in tongues one hour every day reading my bible five chapters every day reading my moon rose book after five years i should be able to look back and there has to be an evidence in my life it encourages me to know that the ones that have not manifest i'm getting there but when your life becomes ichabod that everything at all spiritually even if there's nothing materially let there be spiritual intelligence let there be the anointing praying one hour every day for five years to the same god of heaven and not one sick person has been healed through your hands and not i mean you have not seen any clear dream that came to pass at that point you know that something is wrong are we together many believers are now wondering then your spirit man receives that thing you are doing well spiritually everybody who looks at you knows that you are on fire but then relative to what god has shown you you find out that it looks like certain things are not happening then you are taught that you need your mind to catch up now and get involved in the process are we together when you start working with god your mind doesn't necessarily need to actively follow are we together now you you can't get someone born again and you are teaching him principles of excellence and this and that that's that's too that's too unneeded for that level when people get born again they are exposed to fire principles of prayer how to study the word understanding the foundations of righteousness are we together repentance from dead works they need to understand the redemptive work of christ they need to be introduced to the person of the holy spirit the value of corporate gathering are we together all of these foundational things they have to be involved but then eventually now you are in need your child is in need and now your mind comes in so you start renewing your mind by the strategic communication of god's word but then you get to a point where your physical environment is desperately in need of the manifestation of those spiritual blessings this is where my teaching is now the barrenness of god being represented in your physical life you may laugh because of the consolation you are receiving from your spirit man and the fact that your mind is now catching up but sooner or later the reality of time will start demanding god to be manifest in your physical life not just your spirit alone the vicissitudes of life will now begin to compel you to need to translate those spiritual realities into a context that is applicable to your physical life otherwise you will be surprised to find out that a boomerang begins to happen that the challenge that now obstruct your spirit life will start from the natural realm physically are we together yes so this gentleman has not eaten and he's surprised that he can't pray the realm of the spirit is affected by something that is happening here he's standing and he's watching two of his kids they are driving them from school and he cannot pay 
and when he started with god the issue of finances was not an issue but at this point as a father of two you can't ignore it are we together and he's getting frustrated when he started ministry everybody used to meet under a tree so there was no need for bench and mat if you fell down you fell on the grass but he took it a step further and he opened a church are we together and now you don't sit on the floor in a church and he just realized that they need to buy chairs and he just realized that in that church people will get married one day and that means the reality of family life their well-being that if the families are not doing well no matter how anointed he is very soon there will be empty pews now this guy is is there is a need for the revelation of Christ to find expression not just in the spirit realm not just in the realm of the mind but also in the physical this is where many of us are now apostle the Bible says great is the mystery of godliness that Christ was manifest in the flesh listen he appeared to men he appeared to angels the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory you only behold that glory when it dwells among you are we together even the glory of the father and the bible says is full of grace and truth so i want to help us tonight to show us because let me tell you let me give you a very kind advice. Never allow your personal frustration make you doubt the validity of kingdom laws. Never allow your personal frustration. I know this is very painful. You are, you are far from receiving the help of God when you take your personal frustration and create a vendetta between you and God from it. And say, Lord, as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing what should be done. Why are things not working? No. Many times, the mistake is never from God. A gentleman sent me a text today. Probably he's following. And he was going to commit suicide by this night. I don't mean this play, play, I will kill myself. He really was going to do it. There's how you know that somebody means business with suicide. The kind of dreams he's having. The, somebody cannot just wake up and say, I want to kill myself. He's just looking for help. But there, there are things that can lead to, you know that this person will actually kill himself. And I was telling him, I said, no, no, you don't have to kill yourself. And the person says, usually this is it. I have done everything I know to do. Or I have done everything koinonia teaching says to do. Or I have done everything my pastor or the word of God says to do. I'm going to make some very audacious statements tonight and I hope it doesn't offend you. If it does not work, you are missing something. Hmm. The systems of the kingdom are so flawless. If you really get it, your life will wonder and marvel at the results that will come. Now, this is an, an uncomfortable truth. But I want us to please, for God's sake, humble ourselves tonight and just lend me your attention. That if something is not working in my life and your life, there is something. You know, have you seen a learner learning how to drive? And then the learner is surprised. Why is this car moving that way? I thought you said I should talk. I'm doing my best. He thinks based on his mind that he's doing his best. But the professional knows what is wrong. And the learner will argue and say this and that and that. No, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't do this and that and that. When I started marking student scripts, a school of ministry students, that's when I knew that many students that say they gave me are talking nonsense. <laughs> they gave me five. They gave me ten. As that's for, for, in, for many of it is, is complete nonsense. At least I'm honest, I'm born again and godly and I'm the one that is doing the marking. From a very unbiased perspective. And I'm surprised. Ah, if you wrote this, you should be joking to expect to pass. 
Now, but you ask the person who wrote it. I'm just using that as an example. You ask the person, just because he read and just because he wrote. You can do a mathematical calculation and be wrong. But just because your wrong answer is part of the answers and you got it, doesn't mean you passed. The answer to the question may be five. But your wrong calculation gave you two and option A is two. And you say, I got it. No, you didn't get it. You just found your error as part of the options. Are we following? I don't want to live my life doubting the things I believe. I don't want to get to a point in my life where it becomes too late to be accurate so i want to walk with you in a few minutes and i want by the grace of god i think for many of us i know what is wrong and i want to show you this night and i want you to listen because i'm speaking to people who are largely spiritually enlightened so what is wrong you will be surprised to know that the same frustration many of you are having, I had it too. Because I believe with all my heart that I was getting everything right. But looking from today's standpoint, <laughs> it was a joke. I even wonder how I can see the gaps that the mercy of God covered. Outstanding success has a huge price write it down for someone this is already a deliverance because you believe that success just because the bible says he has given us all things just because the bible says the primary reason why many believers never succeed whether in ministry or in whatever area of life among other things is they misunderstand how spiritual things are both communicated and translated the idea of spiritual things being an inheritance in christ that word if not well explained can mislead you and make you fail now the bible is saying i have been given all things if i have been given it means my next and only assignment based on this is to receive and you are not wrong but the system of reception is every other thing i will be saying for many people we think to receive just means to verbalize by faith i receive you see it now but that's incomplete the same way the system of god giving you this you, you see the bible speaks from different angles and different dimensions and so when you are interpreting scripture you have to first understand the context what was the subject matter that was being addressed because it will help you know why certain expressions were used when paul in his pauline epistle is teaching them on revelations of redemption you notice that his communications was uh, they were always from a standpoint of the finished work of christ you will never see in Paul's context his exegesis on redemption. He does not ever give you any idea that there's anything to be done. So he lets you know that you are starting from a position of victory. And that is correct. With respect to your understanding of redemptive realities. But now you switch to the other dimension which is coming into the experience of the kingdom. And Paul begins to change his communication it is not a he's not counteracting himself he is now showing you why should i want to press to enter something that is an inheritance so paul gets to the book of hebrews and paul now surprises us and even confuses many that in spite of the fact that you have been given this he said there remained a rest for the people of god are we together now he now begins to talk of the sabbath of the church and the sabbath of a man's destiny that until now there is still a rest that means until today men have not entered into the experience of this and he says today if you hear his voice 
it says do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness is that true and then the bible now begins to tell us that he heard the word just like we did but the word did not profit them and he now introduces something strange he said not mixed a jimmy's wife is a professional baker the word mixed doesn't mean to talk it means it involves action it involves process when you mix something you combine factors together and the bible said not mix with faith faith is part of the many things that should be mixed not mixed with faith like you say you didn't add salt to the food the food is not salt there were many other things before salt arrived but for the taste you are looking for salt is the ingredient that must be added not mixed with faith in them that heard it and so many people are unable to translate these realities into their lives success has a huge price it truly is very costly the earlier you got this the better for you settle it once and for all that the birth of anything valuable is painful number two like I will always say, failure too has a huge price tag. Many people don't know that it's not easy to fail. They think it's very easy to fail. If there is a price to produce the results that we need, what is that price? I'm not going to be talking of many of them. I'm just going to mention one that I believe with all my heart that many people are not doing is the price of diligence write it down and listen very carefully please don't assume you understand what i'm saying the price of diligence proverbs 14 verse 23 read it for me if you are a serious Christian, one, two, read, please. But the talk of the lips only does what? In all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips only will tend a man to penury. There is a dimension of entering into your rest that requires labor requires diligence diligence is a trait that all successful people whether in ministry in business have many believers are busy many believers are taking action but they are not diligent Write this down. Diligence is the quality of being productive. Write it down. Diligence is the quality of being strategic. Diligence is the quality of being resilient unbending the refusal to bow out diligence is the quality of endurance please listen to me in africa i don't know if it's a social cultural context but we have a very funny understanding about success we have all kinds of mentalities about success that are wrong in themselves but i think probably the worst of them all is how much we trivialize success to believe that god or government or parents or mother nature owes us are being successful or we just feel i may just put my hands here and there 
and then with just a prophetic word or just a blessing or just a, a, a little oil on it, everything just works. Diligence is not just hard work. Notice my choice of words. You must be strategic. You must be productive. Listen, diligence involves the sacrifice of your time. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your energy. Diligence involves the sacrifice of your resources. The sacrifice of your time, write it down. <laughs> ah, blessed be the name of the Lord. May God open our eyes tonight. Look at me. Let me teach you something. Everybody say time is money. Say it again. You've heard it every time, but what does it mean? What does it mean by time is money? That means that you are only rewarded when you create an event that makes men to have time for it. Listen. Come, Pastor Lawrence and your lovely wife. I was happy to see you people. Just celebrate them. Come, come quickly. Come stand here. Don't be embarrassed. Thank God you are a pastor. Look at this. How many of you know that last year we didn't have time for their wedding? Because the event was not yet created. Anytime an event has not been created in the earth realm, there is no time for it. That means you cannot commit any resources towards it because there is no time for it. Both of them decided, when did you marry? What's it? 15th? Now, they, they decided to bring time and attach an event to 15th September. The moment they took the risk to create an event, people started having time for them and resources started coming to them. Now that the event has been achieved, nobody will give you money for marriage again because there is no longer time for it. Listen, listen. By 1990, there was no time for Zuckerberg. There was no time for Facebook because that product was not created. There was no event that will make you have time for Facebook. So a gentleman said, let me make men have time. And with that time will come resources. And he made available an event. And now we have time for Facebook. There was no time for koinonia. Before koinonia started, your Friday nights were for something else. The moment there was a vision, that vision brought time to it. And with that time, every resource came. Is that true? So when you say time is money, time is not necessarily directly money. Time is only money when an event, a creativity was added and attached to that time. It will now make men to have time for you and with that time it will make them to have their resources. So when you pay Zuckerberg, you are not paying him for the product necessarily. You are really paying for the price he has paid to make you have time for that thing. Are we together now? Now you all have time for browsing. Once upon a time, you could not do that on your phone. Somebody made that possibility. With that time now goes your data. Your data will finish and you want to invest in. When you pay data, what are you really paying? Think well. What are you paying? Time. When you pay for a venue and they say from 12 o'clock to 6 is 60,000, what did you pay for? If they give you a job and they say from 8 to 6 you are working, what are you really paying for? If you take away time on earth, nobody will pay anybody for anything again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there is an event and then men begin to invest in this. 
and now they are married. God bless you. Thank you. Ask him what it took to create that time. <laughs> he summarized it in one sentence. It is not. I said, that's my message. <laughs> now, but is he married or not? Please talk. You are laughing, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Is he married or not? Did the devil stop it? But it is not. 24 hours to your wedding. There's no reception. Oh God, take my shame. That's, that's, that's labor there. It's labor in prayer and faith. It's not just an activity. In all labor, there is profit. <laughs> oh, goodness. It takes diligence. Please sit down, sit down, Pastor. If you are not diligent, listen very carefully, my brothers and my sisters. There is nothing you will ever do and achieve in life if you neglect diligence. There are many, many men of God. For instance, I was listening to Bishop Oedeko's um, lecture at, at Benson Idahosa, the university there, commemorating um, Mama Idahosa's birthday. And I mean... That, that great man of God at that age was just crying out his life. Many people believe life is so cheap. They just think just because there is the anointing that can accelerate a factor. They believe that the anointing is a basis for laziness and lack of diligence. Many of us here, the missing ingredient... Is that we are not diligent diligence does not mean you are not moving you are not moving strategically you are just busy around trying to hustle what business are you doing oh yeah let me join now what are you doing let me just apply I will apply everywhere by faith you believe that what you are doing uh -uh. let me show you something Luke chapter 14 please let's read two verses 28 and 29 I hope God is talking to someone. Luke chapter 14, 28, please. Luke chapter 14, 28. Read with me, Koinonia. One to read. For which of you intending to build a tower? Hold on. So you, you have an intention. You have a vision. You have a goal. But the Bible says the first thing you do is not to go and buy cement. The first thing you do is to do what? Sit down and then count the cost whether you have sufficient to not start it finish it you can know you have what it takes to finish it before you start otherwise the bible will not talk about it here you can know that i have capacity to finish this vision next verse less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all that behold it begin to mock him in fact, let's, let's read the next verse. Saying, this man began to build, continue till I ask you to stop, and was not able to finish. Remember, we're talking of completion here, finishing. Next verse. Or what king going to make war against another king, seated not down first, and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Are we together? That you become strategic about your life. Not just to take action. Many young people pray in tongues. They fast dry. As soon as they are done, they just get up. Just because the Holy Spirit told them, do A and B. They just get up foolishly. They, there is no, they, they don't have that strategic approach to life. A man comes with his wife. Look at this. You are married to your wife. And you are acting as if, how will the finances be run? The spirit God is faithful. Is he not in this life? You are not diligent. Let's pray. Wonderful. But you are not diligent. There is no planning. There is no strategic approach. 
are we together you have real issues that need to be dealt with but you just find a way of spiritualizing it and throw everything faith is not foolishness you are sitting down let me show you diligence how much do we have now Twenty thousand per month how much do you need Two hundred thousand per month we are we are far from the goal but at least we are aware of what we have the miracle comes when you know what you have first remember what you have in your house is already a sign that you are about to receive a miracle are we together yes if you have twenty thousand naira in your house and you are a pastor that means there's no organizing conference there's no organizing any breakthrough service in the name of any hilarious vision we are not diligent and we are not strategic how many pastors are consistently in debt because they continue to organize conferences borrowing money and they tell you it's god that did it and they web themselves in a lot of shame and reproach you borrow one million invite five men of god who come for four now you think that just because it is spiritual you are not strategic about your life you will never prosper and you will not do well that way are we together a man is starting a ministry and all no members there's no track record of loyalty and you go and rent a venue where you are paying hundred thousand per month or per week believers if you don't listen to what i'm telling you you will be surprised that your life is not making progress a tongue-talking born-again believer is receiving salary of fifty thousand. you will find him in zaria suya spot he will buy five chicken one for apostle what you think just because you are buying for apostle means you are you are not diligent if one chicken is say three thousand and you buy five fifteen thousand what percentage of your salary is that all of a sudden you will find out two months later on that you forgot that your child's school fees is coming is it not funny how people forget they have children and then two weeks to resumption or three days they'll say ah sorry yo I didn't know. where is the pta letter you are not diligent it's not about having money or not having money the same way people come to church when they now say time for offering they are surprised you are not diligent you are not strategic about your life you just stand and guess while the offering is coming quickly you just touch your pocket bring out everything and drop it you are not intentional about life i tell you why many things are not working for us we are praying we are happy but we are not getting the level and the kind of productivity that should be gone i have prayed i fasted but i took out time the entire retreat i'm not just going as the spirit leads there is something intentional to be inculcated in the people and because of that it demanded two days it's not god that told me two days the wisdom of the world and the level of investment i seek to produce in your life in these two days necessitate two days of training the first dimension of being diligent is not hard work is being strategic being strategic helps your energy to be worth it many of us are dissipating energy but we are shadow boxing apostle it's not like i'm sitting down i'm moving i'm doing something what are you doing have you thought about what you are doing there are people who can start 10 businesses in one month it's a sign that they are not diligent they were not strategic over what they're doing i just want to do something i want to get my hand doing something you are just hard working you are not diligent a diligent person will sit down you will look at your lifestyle you will look at your goals and your vision you will look at what capital you have the knowledge the level of knowledge you have you look at that business relative to your service relative to your life as a workforce person you look at every other factor how long do i want to do this business is it just to help me get capital for something bigger or this is a line of interest i seek to pursue there's no diligence that's why there is no sustainability in the things we do we just jump at whatever we hear is happening and do you know let me tell you this when you when you continue failing for a long time you will stop believing yourself 
I've seen a lot of pastors, men and women of God, very anointed people, but they come to me and say, Apostle, what, why, why is my life like this? And I look at them, I say, do you know, sometimes they can even tell me as I'm talking to you now, I'm on a dry fast, three days. You know three days dry fast is not easy. Try it. Three days fast in itself is, is but dry. When dry means no water, no nothing. And the person is, you are seeing the spiritual sacrifice. And the person is saying, I thought this thing comes by it. And you are saying, no. Let me tell you what you are doing wrong. I will not become your member. There are many things you don't know. You are not diligent. The man who tells you he wants members has not sat down to really think of what it means to be a pastor over members. He's not planned it ask him have you done your homework to one those members he says i can preach by the grace of god i'm anointed i'm a mighty prophet i'm an apostle of god is that all it takes to run a church are you seeing that now a lot has not happened we ignore all of these things and then he sees and says oh one day we will take the nations in the name of jesus according to my vision i saw doors opening uh-huh what do you think will happen so we just sit down and feel like uh let's do a conference light and glory prophetic encounter season one you start now i'm not being sarcastic you just sat down and thought okay what is this conference supposed to do to my members what is it supposed to do relative to their spiritual level relative to the level of ministry relative to our finances i'm bringing one guest minister from ghana I'm bringing one guest minister from London. I'm adding Apostle Joshua Selman from it. What is your budget for the conference? Two million. What is your entire church offering for a year? 500,000. God is faithful. You see that? That is already a recipe for a struggling pastor forever. I don't care what kind of tongues he prays. There are many believers that don't have plan to one day have their own house. You see it in their life show me your notebook under god that i know that i'm in one small room but i'm already planning and these are the steps i am being strategic let me tell you this i stand before the god of heaven come edge me be my witness there is nothing you see being done in koinonia today that i did not say will happen he will tell you nothing absolutely nothing I can bring notebooks for you and show you where I wrote these things and I wrote everything that will be done when koinonia was going to start I told you that I saw CGC bigger than this it was small but I saw it expand it's not just vision so we began to prepare when the Lord showed me that nations were going to come and all of these things I sat down I said it takes a lot I studied the seven largest churches in every continent of the world it's not just prayer and fasting alone you have to be strategic at a particular level of ministry that i get to i may not be outside on a bike again somebody will embarrass me will i have the financial level at that time to at least have a car what if koinonia needs to run gen 24 hours these are things thank you sir thank you so much these are things that many people never plan for you just sit down and say let's have another baby and god is watching you say you you i did you hear yourself let's have another baby you see nigerians and africa we continue to punish ourselves and we continue to make a fool of god because we are not strategic the baby comes and the man does not know what to do they are confused and he's angry. You are the stupid woman. Why didn't you advise me when I said let's have a baby? Say, is it my fault? And and all of, and the baby who is innocent there is watching. And saying, well, so what is, what is going on now? What are you going to do with me? If I ask many of you here, my dear brothers and sisters, don't stand up. But if I say, how many of you are in ministry? Not will be ministry. Are in some kind of ministry. Many people will stand up. 
and I look at you if I say after 10 years many people will be struggling they will get angry they'll say apostle is proud he's talking nonsense he's being stupid but I said this thing years ago that many ministries will struggle in the future because I saw by the spirit that there were certain demands that 21st century ministry will require and I said Lord I don't want to be stupid I want you to show me what are the systems that will take to excel and God said if you can sit down and you are willing to pay the price I will show you when I was saying some of these things people laughed at me others insulted me others said a lot of things it's amazing how I look at people today and I look at the way they are languishing in the squallow of ignorance God is the builder of all but let me tell you every house is built by someone yes diligence involves being strategic you have to sit down and plan in the name of Jesus God is faithful but I have to plan what is the system for making sure everyone gets filled with the Holy Ghost in Koinonia it's not enough to be anointed imagine that you did not put that system in place a time will come half of your members are not filled with the Holy Ghost my God that is some that is some some Babylon in your church when half of the members are not filled with the Holy Ghost you are in trouble already what is the system in place for all of this is part of being diligent number two diligence involves sacrifice mm. many of us miss it in this area sacrifice is a non-negotiable price if you want to ever be great the sacrifice of prayer the sacrifice of prayer you see the sacrifice of fasting the sacrifice of staying till you understand the word of God God is my witness whom I serve I don't know how many hours I've slept from yesterday till today and it's going to be a marathon into the week just going don't get me wrong I rest but every man knows uneasy lies the head that wears the crown you see that while you are sleeping and praying oh God bless these people in this retreat open their eyes let koinonia service today be powerful bring the people let there be miracles let there be signs let there be wonders my brothers and my sisters no matter what god has given you the sacrifice dimension of success is something you must come to terms with it will cost you we are a generation that likes comfort too much we're a generation that likes pleasure too much. We're a generation that is so averse to sacrifice. The moment you have to constrain yourself a little, we complain and shout and ramble. Yet, if you see the kind of results we want, it takes, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Take sacrifice. Someone sent me a text and said, Apostle, why are you not responding to me? I've been calling you and you are not responding. What is this? And I just looked. I said, this, this man does not know the hundreds of text messages that I get every day. And the things that I have to do. I was counseling people yesterday. Counseling people in Lagos. I already knew I was going to miss my flight. I told this, my people, I said, you guys should just go to the airport. I'll find my way. Just go. I knew I was going to miss my flight. But the people that I was, it was a strategic counseling. And I said, no, no, no. Let me miss the flight. You just go. And they went. As soon as we're done, I went to the airport, got the next flight that could come to Abuja. Instead of just flying down to Kaduna and coming to rest, I had, to, because of sacrifice, I routed down to Abuja and then from there now, from the airport back, I arrived in the night. As soon as I arrived, I just went, refreshed myself and went to work immediately. Apostle Joshua Selman. Someone sent me a text and said, Apostle, we are proud of you. We saw that in Lagos, they gave you an award. I said, don't look at the award. Look at the hands that collected that award. The sacrifice. We like pleasure. We like clapping. 
but the inner price the price apostle what do you do that people are just blessed like this what do you do that the anointing you are just talking and people are jumping up and down my brother and my sister is not a charm it's a price even a charm has a price my police will not just give you a charm because you want to be diabolic do you know how much you are going to pay it's a price I can't remember the last time in my life I watched a movie I have television but it's off I can't remember the last time the TV in my room was on honestly sincerely why did you buy it then I must enjoy you it's my money then you will never become anything in life there is a huge price please young people listen being young does not mean to be indisciplined and careless you must be ready to be serious and pay the price it takes nobody just follows a leader just because of anointing it's a combination of many factors including a track record of consistency every member wants to know that the leader they follow is visionary enough there must be predictability to your destiny and your vision your life and whatever your mission is must be well articulated for anyone to follow you otherwise they'll come and receive miracles and just go away human beings are not stupid they are first human beings before members of any church sacrifice say i receive grace to be sacrificial mm. sacrifice when you carry the money you should buy a book with and read and you buy shoe because you saw somebody buy a shoe of hundred thousand you allow a luciferian spirit to deceive you to go and buy a shoe of hundred thousand to prove a point you are not ready for the sacrifice dimension of greatness let me tell you it's not just when you have you spend there are times that a door can be open but you close it yourself because you know the time has not come it's not every open door that means God has licensed you to pass. The door does not have to be closed to know it's not time. It can be open, but you limit it by yourself and close it because there is a season of appearing. Is God speaking to us? Sacrifice. Many of us are comfortable with little results. That's why you find out that my many brothers and sisters, men of God around this nation and the world, they never go far. They start small, small signs and wonders, small membership, small miracles, small testimony. And you know that arrival mentality. I look at myself and say, Apostle, you've not started though. You've not started at all. You never come to my house. I have received so many awards. You never come to my house and see one picture that I snap with a governor or a politician or somebody from the presidency, you will not find one. I don't trust them. They are deceptive. You won't find any award on my table. With this he received award from this one. This one he met with this governor. This one he met with this. You, it's not Joshua Selman. Those things are deceptive. I push them. What you find is my future on my table, not my past. Fill me up. Till I overflow, I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Fill me up. Till I overflow, I wanna run over. I get hundreds of text messages every day apostle you are a sign and wonder the apostle of our time great man there is a testimony apostle we've been trusting God for a child for eight years remember you spoke to us now the child has come apostle let me have your account number we want to be sending this and that and sometimes I put my phone in front of me like this and I look at it I said Lord deliver me from deception and complacency deliver me compared to where we are going this is only a step out of the cave there are still lands to conquer there are still territories what have we seen that we brag about there are deep 
things in the spirit when you have an arrival mentality you will never see the need to sacrifice to sacrifice in this kingdom you don't arrive oh you don't arrive all those who arrive are the ones who are no longer relevant when god is moving is god speaking to us many of us here are not willing to sacrifice show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be prosperous show me what you are willing to sacrifice to be truly anointed show me what you are willing to sacrifice apostle i like movie i'm like that we are all we are in our family it's a gift it's not a gift it's an appetite you have refused to cop it can be a gift even if you are called into the movie industry it takes diligence to sit down and plan can be a gift hallelujah let me tell you some of us need to trust god for grace to off that laptop off that phone off that television and say television i'm tired of watching other people fulfill the assignment i'm ready to sit down lord you are calling me into a strong apostolic ministry i open my bible not tv there is a time to watch tv but in the name of jesus i sit down when others are sleeping you wake up your eye wants to close they don't try it. don't try it i'm going far lord open my eyes and you are hearing one message you are about to rest more there's another worship backing you up then there is another prayer confession as you are stretching fire on your spirit because you are preparing for an extraordinary life men of god there is no shortcut to this thing let's not mock god there is no shortcut that blood must really flow the way to the throne is the cross there is no other way hallelujah and you sit down the the the, the sacrificial dimension of diligence there are times that god will demand from you i have ten thousand that's all i have and god says carry it and give me and you sit and say god no you are uh, if you are really god your mercies endure you are new every morning all those statements of unbelief you carry that thing by faith and say lord i'm i'm let me be stupid for you let me tell you this show me a man who is no longer afraid of pain i show you a man that satan cannot do anything about when you when you master pain and it no longer touches you the devil will put his hand on his head and say what do i do with this person because pain is his edge in your life the moment you are uncomfortable you run away from that thing the cave you fear holds the miracle you look for that cave the cave that you are afraid of is because the treasure you seek is there you must trust god for grace and roll that stone and enter into that graveyard eyes closed and say lord if i perish i perish is god speaking to us yes say sacrifice say it shout sacrifice the sacrifice of your time the sacrifice of your energy many of you see what god is doing through this ministry did you know that sometimes as early as six or seven in the morning the workers are already at work you see this guy standing the worship team is behind me male and female no difference when you are in the worship team they are standing there so when you hear me raise a song and they are singing it's not robots human beings behind everything that works is a man making it work behind everything that works if you eat a delicious meal someone stood in the midst of the smoke to cook it if your cloth is nice someone paid the price to iron it please let us settle it once and for all nothing just happens if you are fed spiritually at the back of that revelation is someone's sacrifice we devalue the sacrifices of men in nigeria 
you look at young people talking about men of God and they have zero revelation, zero result, zero discipline, zero vision. Yet they sit down and tear men of God. They talk about men of God. This guy is more anointed than this. This one is more sound. Ah, that other guy in, uh, in, in Ghana. Oh, have you seen the one in this? Oh, and they sit down and analyze. Any day you see sacrifice, don't pretend you didn't see it. Stop by and salute it. Even if you are in a hurry, the moment you see a man with blood and the scars of sacrifice, please don't pass and ignore it. Stop and say, I salute the investment of God upon your sacrifice. It's the reason why when we finish service, we allow our elderly ones to sit down. It's not just because of favoritism the sacrifice of time the sacrifice of life the precious workers in this ministry some of them have been working since morning some of them will only go back early in the morning and some of them by by early in the morning they are going to start their work sacrifice the koinonia you are getting blessed by many of you when i mention a scripture you see it here at the back of this result is someone who is paying the price to make sure they do it well what do you want in life? Are you willing to pay the price? Or are you willing to let the price be paid for you? No. Say I receive grace to be sacrificial. One more time. Say I receive grace. Show me a man of God that will sacrifice in prayer. That will sacrifice in mentorship that will sacrifice in the word whose heart is open to understand the systems of god my brother and my sister i show you a man of god that no devil no power no cause no charm in existence can stop show me a man who is willing to settle down and understand god's financial systems and pay the price I show you a man who will wave poverty forever and wave it goodbye forever. Show me a man who is ready to pay the price to be diligent enough to be valuable. I show you a man who will never beg. Never beg. Never beg. Something happened when we were traveling to Lagos. Very humorous story. Let me just say it. I got into the plane and then I saw, I saw a couple and their mother. They were shouting at Paul, so I said, these people have come to embarrass me now. And they were happy, and then when we got down, the mother came and hugged me. Said she has been listening to my message. My son, let's snap. And we're snapping, and the mother just squeezed some money. I said, mama, don't do this. I don't know you. I said, you, you must collect. You. And I said, ah, this is somebody's salary. And somebody is saying, you must collect. The key is not anointing, it's value value if you are not valuable no mama will stand behind you a a wise son makes a glad father a foolish son is a reproach to his mother nobody will be proud of you for not doing nothing let me tell you the truth i'm being hard on us i love you our retreat has started workers value stop packaging faking lying settle down and say in jesus name i must get this thing stop looking for money and trust god to piece together all the spiritual resources to be valuable they were carrying my luggage and then i sat down somewhere at the airport and the next thing i saw some group of boys i know how people look at me i just know that they're about to embarrass me again they came and said apostle ha ah, jesus this and that and that I was sad because I missed my flight. I was on my way to pick another flight to come back. And then I get into the plane and I see someone looking at me. Apostle. And he shouted, Jesus. I quietly went and I sat down. There was a space between me and the next person. True story. Yesterday, the guy got up and left his workmate and came to me. That he wants, I said, no, you want to embarrass me here. We started creating a scene. And you know how people in the plane, got, ah, they were happy. The guy said, I'm not going. He wanted to kneel down there. I said, what is all this now? Ha, this is a, a flight that is taking us guy said he must sit down close to me i said okay he sat down close to me when everything was done i didn't know that all through that flight he was busy packaging a lot of money he works in abuja 
and he just carried that i said no 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 i won't collect i will just bless you and i said once upon a time in my life this is what i needed to eat dinner and jesus was still lord if you are not valuable nobody will reward you my brothers and my sisters success is not a charm if you are not valuable nobody will reward you stop making demand of from life when you are not giving anything back it's a scam to demand from life and not give anything back so after you he said this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare the warfare is not just fighting demons you are wrestling with prophecy in the name of jesus a word has come that god is my ebenezer to help you means you are doing something lord I'm, I'm i'm going to settle down and take my life seriously why is it that my help has passed me and there is nothing it's like a stench from my life driving them why is nobody coming to sponsor my ministry something is wrong value i don't share these testimonies to brag i told you about my pastor friend who someone called him and said please do you know apostle he said yes he said i'm going to transfer money to you send it to him for me the thing paying the man of god he called me and said apostle what is this somebody doesn't know you and knows me then now sends money to my account and say i should transfer it to you i just cracked a joke and we laughed and laughed he's my very good friend value you can make up your mind and say in the name of jesus i will pay my children's school fees the whole session from the beginning of every year and then when you are prophesied like that you carry your spirit your head your mind into the room where the spirit of god breathes upon people and you say lord there has to be a way there has to be a way i can tell you this my brothers and my sisters when you mean business the gate of destiny must open the reason why many of us have not forced that that gate must be broken he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder the gate of destiny will not open when you stand and just speak english oh gate i'm standing here no stories you are, you are mocking yourself gates you must open you must open you didn't open for my father Look at what he said, him and his wife, that nobody ever married legally. I'm sure he made up his mind in the name of Jesus, I must marry a wife by paying a dowry and going to church. When he was saying it, the evil force, he said, let's see what will happen. I did it for your father and your mother. Let me tell you something. Sacrifice is a covenant. When you make up your mind to sacrifice, it's like entering a covenant with God gather unto me my saints 50 verse 5 psalms they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice number three diligence involves resilience and tenacity now this is where i want to talk a little and then we'll pray for tonight please sit down everybody say resilience everybody say tenacity come hold me try to resist me as i'm moving this is how life is no destiny will not allow you cut walk to the promised land no sir there are not only giants in the gate the giant starts from egypt they will pursue you it's not just the giants on the promised land there are giants where you are going there are forces that will stop you so you are to hold me again you are trying to move forward and these devils that have stopped everybody want to stop you it takes faith you will fail many times and you say satan i will wear you by my consistency whoever told you that just because god spoke to you you will succeed at first there is difference between failure as an event and failure as a person believers this is where we miss it the average christian when he fails once he will bring all kinds of jargons around and excuse and say you see this this and and christians we are very good at making people to stop rising 
the moment you do something you you god told you you are going to take worship to the nations your first album you bought it by yourself so i won't disgrace myself like this again sorry mr man that means you are not ready to get to the nations life rewards tenacity you put the first album it doesn't work you say i know i didn't get anything right but at least it gave me exposure let's go to write the second song the first one i just composed nonsense the second one i'm not just going to involve the holy spirit alone i will involve a music director so both the holy spirit and a music director is involved to help you balance some of the things that will make people like us not to buy it are we together and now by the time you balance it your second album comes with a greater level of professionalism a day will come you'll be standing on a stage and somebody will be waiting with a check outside to give you what would have been your bill for the first entire production the first time whoever told you champions become champions from day one don't you know that success is overcoming many failures you never qualify to be great if you cannot ignore failure and keep moving god is speaking to someone already man of god just because you started ministry and nobody's patronizing your grace just because you started ministry every sick body you prayed for looked at you and warned you and they told you to never never come for their conference again just because the first sermon you made a mistake you forgot the scripture because of tension anointing will not drive tension like that it takes experience to drive tension you will need to do this thing many times ramble on the stage more than once twice and then eventually one day you will now begin to gain yourself you can articulate do you know what it means to be talking and looking at people and they are looking at you back especially if they are frowning at you you crack a joke nobody laughs you forget the scripture no amount of prayer will take that thing away it's a track record you must create so it's not a spiritual problem he said it's just the 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 challenge you face on your road to greatness you don't go back and say oh god but i fasted now what evil spirit and no evil spirit entered you consistency consistency a day will come you will build confidence you will be able to look at people and preach is god speaking to us say in the name of jesus I will wear failure until I succeed the word wear there doesn't mean to put it on it means to wear it if my expression is not correct find your own the idea is frustrate failure till you succeed look let me tell you failure can be tired I found out by experience that failure is personified like a being that can say I'm tired of this guy go pass and the gate opens and you walk gallantly i can tell you stories of my failures and you will be surprised i remember praying for somebody years ago they took me to pray for someone on wheelchair i think i've shared it in maybe 2012 or 13. i went full of the holy ghost those days you fasted and prayed for everything even if they said lead praise and worship I prayed for I, I took out time if you see the level of revelation I shared and yet when the time came to pray all in the final analysis I prayed I laid hands and I know the man had faith because faith comes by hearing that guy gave me all his attention I knew his spirit was in what I was saying let me give you a little testimony as we come let's laugh a little you see this guy here I love it Jimmy let me tell you this when I started teaching them how to get people filled with the Holy Ghost and the principles of impartation something happened one day I left a Jimmy and one lady he was to get her filled with the Holy Ghost you see when you see him talk now you are flying from your chair it's a track record I remember Jimmy talking with the lady in you know he's very intelligent he shared every revelation when he finished he now tried the lady was tired she said I'm, I'm tired this thing I mean it's so it pained him 
and then I, I can't remember the story exactly i think he called on me and i came and i mean in less than one minute that lady was and we were going home and jimmy was gloomy he just said but ah, that at least if she fell down he knew he would have helped her fate i remember comforting him and said don't worry do you know why i'm taking out time to act this drama so that you can be healed from that lie the devil is telling you amateurism is allowed in the school of success every professional was once a student are you hearing what i'm saying don't be ashamed of being a student just make sure you continue so when you go for the meeting and just like apostle taught you your blood is hot from SOM graduation you received fire here and you just organized a meeting and in the name of jesus you waited for word of knowledge you were surprised nothing happened the crusade you prayed said i sense the anointing here and the person who fell was there and you just everybody is looking at your error and as soon as they shared the grace you went back and said kai of course god will always leave himself with a witness but you go back feeling lord Abba, if i was wrong couldn't you have even just done it and then we can settle it later god says no pass through it it's a track record the day you are coming down from your car and a blind eye is opening that day people look at you and say how did you start you say my brother i didn't start with a blind eye opening i started with finishing a service like funeral <laughs> because nothing happened prophesy to someone say pay the price say pay the price honorably <laughs> hallelujah ask every doctor here when they were students the things they laugh about now was once a thorn in the flesh ask every lecturer here when they were teaching him what he's now teaching the students he didn't smile at some of the things abi pastor alpha you can't look at some of them and say this thing is hard yet today you are the one teaching it hallelujah so you stand today and declare in the name of the lord and someone is blessed you are learning the principles of finance and favor you get up with that zeal and go and start a business you start a popcorn machine with the fire from the book you read and you eat your popcorn alone nobody comes you just say it's an evil spirit no sir look let me tell you this if you learn this tonight you will not be ashamed of your pain again the next time things go wrong it's not always demonic sometimes you just say lord i thank you look at the apostles think how many times they were embarrassed do you know what it means to be mentored by apostle jesus this is jesus we are talking about the apostle of our faith having mentored some guys full of grace and truth and then they went to pray for an epileptic patient mentored directly by jesus not john not moses and they laid hands on that guy in the name of jesus and the guy was not healed the people would have beat them there to kill them if jesus didn't come on time but the time came hallelujah peter when peter is in a room they line sick people not for a crusade peter is about to pass and his shadow mastery they call it mastery a realm and a dimension had come did you know once upon a time in my life i would never speak for someone to fall under the anointing no i will lay hands then you will fall so if i want five of you to receive any impartation i will patiently follow i didn't have the luxury of just making a statement where who, who dash monkey banana but you ask the devil in the pit of hell ask him he knows that you stand and make one pronouncement and open the two lift gates over men's destinies it's not just an impartation it's a track record are we together now listen tonight i want you to know that failure is not the end is a pathway to success this is the level where many of you are now that's why i'm explaining to you you are there now and you are praying and nothing is happening lord come through for me now and it looks like your heavens are closed and you are already getting angry you are already getting frustrated father i thought apostle said that if we finish dancing 
have danced and danced and danced. I put my prayer request. I danced through the night. It happened to me too. Don't think it just manifested. Let me tell you something. The future you are trying to enter, a large part of it by God's grace have entered. I can tell you what to expect. It will do you like a dream. The day the day the legal claims of your training is over you will wake up one morning into a realm that you say god tell me it's a joke what is this what is this see a day will come you will look at your life and not find any scar and you are saying where did it go to and god says enjoy the blessings of your endurance when you see someone going to NDA, you see how they treat him when he's going to what they call the first level. Tamawan? Yes. But by the time that gentleman is about to stand and give his last parade, he stands with honor. The fearful, weak guy five years ago is now the warrior of today. They can send him to Maiduguri and he says, where is Boko Haram? I'm ready to face them. Some of what you are going through, God gives you victory many times by bringing your fear and you together. There is a relationship between your fear and you and the spirit of courage. Sometimes running away from your fear will destroy you. So God makes you strong by making you stare at your fear until you become friends. Your fear will no longer run away from you. Is it not the rent? You stand with the landlord. You stand with the policeman. And finally, you will learn that police does not kill. Landlord does not kill. You no longer fear. Then the miracle comes. And God will say, it's not that I could not supply it. I wanted to build your heart so that you are strong. Notice that every time you fail, if you use it well, it can impart faith in your heart. This is something until you are in the school of the spirit, it will never make sense. Hallelujah. You can turn your fears to your miracle. Man of God, the fact that you gave a word of knowledge. Oh, I'm seeing Pastor James on you. He said, no, my name is Pastor Alpha. Uh, your, your wife, you married Judith. Say, no, sir. If you, are not, if you are not serious, we will drive you here. My wife is called Annie. You, do you, you have five sons? No, sir. We have two. Two. I'm seeing a girl. No, sir. I have a boy. And you turn back and say, God, if you didn't send me, why embarrass me? I can go back to, I can use my accounting. Can't, what is it a bank? I can't go and walk in a bank. And God says, you are a prophet to the nations. Let me tell you, do you know while you are, help him. Oh my God. You see that? Do you know that while you are complaining, God never talks to you about that issue. He gives you another assignment. He now says, all right, that lady, go and meet her stand before her before i'll tell you what to say say mm -mm. god what is her name first say no so go and stand and you now say young lady no i'm not this kind of guys if you think i'm saying no 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 i know you are somebody's wife god just sent me so you talk fast already the, your your hearing is hazy by her shout listen he's training you so that the day you stand over a nation and say the lord said i should speak over this nation no matter who writes an article writing nonsense you have been immune there is a vaccination you have received all these people that cry over little persecution you were not trained well in the school of the spirit is god speaking to us oh god is calling me to be a kingdom millionaire and god says so you're fifty thousand and he said lord please I, I, is he you confirm it in a dream and you have five dreams in the night to show you it is him you even see yourself giving it you ask god to confirm every other thing you won't you will have a close heaven but confirm this one at once it will come and you keep giving like a fool until one day someone advises you and say look i know that you know this destiny we take it easily and god says listen to me and one day in one year when the rewarder of man ah oh, 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 oh. my help has come my help has come listen i will never forget the first time in my life 
I started seeing a strange manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It was during our second crusade. I remember going to minister in a church. That was the first time I would mention people's names and see them run out by the anointing. Like I mentioned your name and you run out. I said, what is this? I've never seen this. The signs don't go before. The signs don't go with. They follow you. Listen. Many of us believers, let me teach you. You are in a season right now where your failure does not mean God is not speaking. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please listen very carefully. The fact that you may not get it right physically does not mean the anointing is not on you. The fact that you did the business and it failed does not mean that kingdom financing anointing is not on you. The fact that you preached and your message looked like nonsense, all the revelations you gathered evaporated is not demonic, it's a track record. Go through it and see what you will make out of your life. You pray for the first person, he's not healed. Say, Lord, while I'm learning what I did wrong, who will I pray for again? And God will say, there is a cancer patient, stage four in Shika. I say, Lord, this is too much. Don't embarrass me like that. And God says, well, it's up to you. You can choose to disobey me. When you look at that cancer patient, even you by yourself, you, you will be afraid. What did you come to do here? I, I, I came to pray. God sent me now. I was, and he said, oh yeah, pray, let's see. As soon as you pray, on your way going out you see that the person has died they say if if you are not careful we will arrest you and you go back and say god what did i do is it not the call and god says no son you continue i am birthing a mighty healing ministry through you a day will come listen a day will come in and through your life it's no longer the issue of who is healed or who is not healed again your ego has been so strong it's now about obedience not results that is the day you will pass somebody on a wheelchair and he will get up you didn't plan the idea was not to pray for the sick but you had gotten to a point in the spirit where you are not an amateur again this is how God builds this man that you see my goodness I can't begin to tell you about my failures you think it's every message I preach that was impressive no what you see today is a track record of many years man of god i bring you a word of hope don't let any man despise you you know sometimes we men of god we have a way of intimidating especially younger people and we make them look like there's no hope for you it's a lie if god brought me where i am there is nobody that cannot rise with greater fire and grace don't fake visions if you are not seeing it be patient you can see a real vision start where you are and be patient Take the risk. You will make mistakes. Not you may. You will. But don't allow it dampen you. You have to believe in your destiny enough to know. Apostle, look at what I'm doing. My life is empty. God, where are you? Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You may think that you had a revelation. That this guy is your husband this girl is your husband you go and meet her and say sorry I'm engaged and you go back and say God but you spoke to me he says no problem you are learning how to hear you are learning spiritual precision a day will come you will be a master and your voice will be like the voice of God upon the earth and when they look at you remember remember brothers and sisters little Samuel too had a problem when he was hearing God the man whose word never fell to the ground a day came he said is it God or not God Eli I'm not sure the Bible captures the story of his learning but now look at Samuel a man like a God upon the earth another man looks at him and his donkey starts going back home what changed a track record of consistency are you ready to pray diligence Add diligence to everything that has happened and unbending resilience Lord you have called me into the worship ministry even if nobody invites me I will continue writing songs Lord they may not place a demand on my grace but I will continue I will give my best to it I will pay the price brothers and sisters I guarantee you this
this that looks like a simple message if you pay attention tonight you will wear life out until the gate is open for you lift your voice and begin to blast in the pray in the spirit for a few minutes anointed to be a deliverer he didn't know how to do it he killed an Egyptian because he was not strategic God took him God did not take away the assignment God showed him how he would do it it will be by a rod not a knife Moses you are called but you are using the wrong tools some of you you are called but the tools you are using is why you are failing 
you are called into business but the tools you are using you are called into ministry but how you were mentored is why things are not working the information given to you it is true that you are a deliverer you are called into the prophetic but the way they taught you the prophetic is why it looks like divination you were called into wealth and abundance but the person who mentored you may have been a greedy person and he made it look like the call to kingdom wealth is a call to materialism lord correct my strategy lift your voice and pray correct my strategy something is wrong not with the vision not with the assignment the strategy may be wrong lord correct my strategy there is a way i'm doing ministry that's why i'm not getting result it's not the call it's the strategy pray this prayer lord correct my prayer strategy correct my bible study strategy correct my leadership strategy missing something i know i'm missing something please pray tonight why is my church not growing why is my ministry not growing lord i don't doubt the call but i doubt the strategy correct the strategy listen listen Please look up everyone hear me tonight's meeting is very powerful for many of you you don't need to correct the vision you don't need to correct the assignment you are right but the strategy is what is making the result to not come the business you are in is correct but the strategy the ministry is correct but the strategy you were not supposed to have a church it was an evangelical outfit you went to open a church now nobody is bringing money for cheers let me tell you you are not free till the pattern is given to you the pattern is the strategy it says go and fill seven vessels with water that was the strategy go around jericho that was the strategy walk on water is not enough to want a miracle Lord, reveal the strategy for my result. For my result. Result in ministry. Result in my spiritual life. Lift your voice and pray. Reveal the strategy. Reveal the strategy. Hallelujah. Look up, please. We'll soon be done. I want us to pray over our finances. Look at me. Many of us here, this is where we really need God to come in. God has blessed you with all blessings. Right now, there are many of us, there's not much you can do with your finances. You are going to say, Lord, open my eyes. Where is my strategy? Not our strategy where is my strategy for ministry how do i finance ministry how do i finance my business lord i'm about to get married lord i'm married with three children what is the strategy lift up your voice and pray show me oh god every financial exploit comes with a solid strategy your ministry will never be financed until you receive a strategy. Your life and destiny may never be adequately financed until you receive a strategy. What is the blueprint of God? Please break 
koinonia. Don't take lightly this prayer. Shabaraka posekete. Ente la kaparaka tushu. Hallelujah. Listen, please look at me. When it was time to cross the Red Sea, the strategy for Moses was take your rod, stretch it. The river parted, the ground lifted. When it was time for Joshua to lead the people through, listen, the strategy was that the, the I think the, the, the priest, the, the, the Levites or so, went in front and then the jordan parted when it was time for jesus the strategy was not to part the water you would die there waiting for water to part whereas the strategy has changed the fact that god is not doing something the way he did it yesterday doesn't mean he's the is not the one doing it give us this day my strategy give me this day lord the strategy that started ministry from zero to hundred i've exhausted it what is the strategy from hundred to one thousand what is the strategy lord the strategy for my finances as a bachelor as a spinster i received it but now i'm married with three children what is the updated strategy for my daily bread Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Someone met me last week, a dear lovely man of God that I love so much. And he called, he said, Apostle, how are you doing it? You have been transporting people since Koinonia started. You are doing all of these things. You don't raise money. You don't do anything. You don't cajole. You don't invite preachers to raise. How do you do it? And I looked at him, I said, my brother, you must stay with God, not just to understand the call. Many of us, once you get the call, you just stand up and start running. No, the strategy is your advantage in any battle. Ask any military man. They call Operation ABC. That ABC is the strategy for the victory. If they say Operation this, the military people know that this is the formula we are using for the takeover strategy when we started i remember when god came and told me said son the last meeting for every month is dedicated for a miracle service it's a strategy you will just get up blindly and go and make the last meeting of your own program to a miracle service and not get any result because it is a strategy every strategy has an anointing on it you see us gather prayer requests here and i pray on it for Bishop Oyedeko, his strategy is the power of the spoken word. You may not see anybody fall down under the anointing while he's speaking. But the strategy is that he uses the creative word, power of the word. Or a robot, his strategy was to lay hands. He didn't just speak. If there were 1,000 people, or a robot will lay hands one by one. But if he touches you, be sure you are standing up. Strategy. For Benny Hinn is to worship very sensitive annoying worship sometimes he can tell everybody hush and you're saying what is this i remember once upon a time they had a program with archbishop benson idahosa and he was worshiping worshiping and one time idahosa came and collected the mic and said rain is coming and idahosa just started shouting and that's how people started getting here because the strategies are different william branham will stand and say the angel that was assigned to him has not come and that's how he will wear those people there. William Branham will stand like a herbalist and say he's apologizing. Let the people be patient. And then at a point, he will just say, the angel has come. Word of knowledge. He will start moving in a strange way. And people attacked him. He said, that's the blueprint that was given. Every man of God, if he sits down and he's honest with you, he will tell you the strategy. There is how I know the power of God is ready to move. I can't teach you I can teach you generically but there is a strategy 
is like the palm of your hand is wired for your use as a man of God I cry to God I say Lord what is the financial strategy for this ministry because this ministry will grow and now the the mass media that is supposed to be an avenue most churches raise finances a major part of the finance that runs ministry is from the media and now God is saying give the messages free don't sell anything imagine the hundreds of millions of naira that it would have brought and now it has gone Lord you have to reveal it ah when he comes to you my God when my God comes to you he will tell you something that does not make sense but you are stupid enough to take it as a strategy you will join those who are clapping for you to wonder and say Lord I fear you hallelujah yes. there is a strategy there is a way we do ministry here is a strategy that God gave for Dr. Lukoya is prayer he will raise prayer points and you will pray and while you are praying in that prayer the power of God is moving and touching people there are many people for Papa Ia Deboye he will stand and in the calmness of his voice make a prophetic declaration and people will come for Reverend Dr. Uma Okpai he will raise a song and while he is dancing and singing people are rising up don't copy strategies receive strategies Listen, I assure you, and I want you to hear me as we round up. Believe me when I tell you this, that you will never fail. You walk with these truths that I teach you. You walk with these things that I tell you. It is arrogant to unnecessarily tamper with the equations. Many people, they don't have results yet, but they tamper with the equations. Receive it with childlike faith. Don't let anybody tell you this thing doesn't matter. Do they have the results you are looking for? There are many proud people, and I say this with every sincerity of heart. There are many proud people without results who go around talking against people who have tremendous results. Love everybody, but don't give your ears to people who don't have results. You will become like them. No man can give what he doesn't have. hallelujah can we pray one last prayer point I want you to challenge the spirit of laziness lukewarmness listen it says I would that thou were neither hot I mean either hot nor cold I would I desire you are not diligent and you are not completely lazy you are just somewhere in between if you are very hot i can make you hotter if you are cold i can know you are cold and help you but you are dilly-dallying in the middle of nowhere you are going to pray and cry that laziness especially the spirit many of us sincerely i love you and i don't mean to hurt or embarrass you but many of us are extremely lazy lazy to a surprising degree especially for a young man lord destroy laziness from my life lift your voice and pray financial laziness spiritual laziness intellectual laziness take it away from my life take it away from my life take it away from my life are you praying to study diligence to be valuable hallelujah please permit me to add for us one more request we are going to pray concerning this issue of value 
I'm sure that by God's grace, I'll speak on it again for workers. But we're going to pray. Listen. 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 If you are not valuable, Koinonia, listen to me. Those outside, those online, listen to me. No matter how you convince yourself, if you want to reign in today's world, what you have must be exceptional. If everybody has what you have, there is no space for you. Did you hear what I said? If everybody has, this is not about competition. If what you have can be given by another person, cheaper or freer, you are in trouble. You must trust God to brand you with a level of value that makes you so unique. No devil of poverty or failure or mediocrity or inferiority hangs around you. I told you that a man of God was praying for me one time. And he laid hands on my head and said, Father, create a problem in his region that only he will be able to solve. I thought, I, in my mind, I felt so bad because I said, Kai, no, I'm somebody who is for the body. I don't like this thing of one person outshining others. What kind of prayer is this? But when I understood value, then I prayed that prayer. And I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, create something, oh God, for me. I thought it was a joke there are many preachers but there is one Joshua Selman the same way there are many people but there is one HME there is one when we want to hear the voice of Sam Amaka cannot sing like Sam Sam cannot sing like Amaka if we want to hear the strings Elijah and the music director don't play the same thing listen when God makes you exceptionally valuable, sit back and watch the power of the Sabbath work in your life. It will be like a jam. The way men will run and come to you. I tell you this thing. I'm not lying to you. Take away your wrong mindset. Listen to me. You want to prosper and rise in today's world. It's more than a job. You need to master value in a way and manner. And it will shut the mouth of darkness. I look at my life today. If you listen to what I'm teaching you, my brothers and my sisters you will sit back and wonder and say what is this life is it will look unfair don't think it's happening just because he's called joshua selman it's not true it's a law can you pray that one prayer as we're ending i give you two three minutes find a corner and cry to god lord i'm not unique enough i'm grateful for what you have made me but I know there's something that you can put upon my life. That every time someone says Pastor Femi, every time someone says Pastor Alpha, I thank God for everybody, but that uniqueness. Pray. Grant me the grace to be valuable. Hallelujah. Listen, your value is what brands you, is what identifies you as to whether you are rewardable or not. Pastor Lawrence is so good in the graphics. When you needed to, to write the names of School of Ministry students, as anointed as I am, you didn't come to meet me. Because with respect to that, I'm totally not valuable. It's not an insult, it's the truth. Tomorrow, when we want to cook for the workers, you are not going to meet Joshua Selman. Nobody has ever come to meet me for advice on cooking. As sincere as I am. You won't come because you don't consider me that valuable. Nobody has invited me today to sing praise and worship. Does it mean I cannot sing? But I'm not that valuable. There are many options. Why should you be picked when there are easy options to you? I vowed and I told God, 
I will never go and minister anywhere that they'll say, Mr. Man, thank you. This is your honorarium. Go. And the next time they discuss, when they bring Joshua, they say, No, please, no, no way. I will never do that. So I pay the price in the word, I pay the price in prayer, I pay the price to know what to do and what not to do. That's the key. And it will bring you to, to suck the breast of kings. They will give you access to their treasures. Treasures that they would not even give their relatives. And you will stand and wonder and say, life can be this easy. Koinonia, hear me. If no one is looking for you, it's because you are not valuable enough. Don't be angry. Take this truly. If you are not valuable enough, nobody will look for you are we together yes there are people i've met in my life it's amazing how as soon as i met them and discern their value those who used to provide that area of value they are, the doors of my favor towards them close immediately there are people like that are we together there are people who are doing one thing or the other for me is dangerous if you are easily replaceable i say it again it is dangerous when you become easily replaceable that means in this life you will not amount to much the consequence is that you will be angry you will be resentful you will hate everyone that's why i'm an advocate for mastery you have to trust god for grace to know whatever he's granted you grace to do and know it well if it means adding educational qualification to rise to that position of uniqueness do it if it means reorienting your mind even against what you study do it whatever price it takes to stand you out Paul, a man approved of God. You stand out. Not in a competitive way, but in a unique way that brands you. That's why I don't have enemies. I don't insult anybody. I don't fight anybody. I'm more than grateful to be me. I don't think it would have happened that way if I were not this valuable. If I were not the one behind all the mighty testimonies by the Spirit of God that this ministry enjoys, probably I would have joined the many people insulting others. Do you know when you have results you don't hate? It's true. It's true. There's no need for it. I live a very happy and peaceful life. That's why I love the body of Christ. I honor everyone. Resentment is a product of an awareness that a replacement is likely to happen to you. But when you stand in a position on part of, look at Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is friends with him. He can bring any man of God to his program and talk with joy. Because we are talking of Benny Hinn here. By the privilege of the grace of God, Benny Hinn is Benny Hinn till he goes to be with the Lord. Kenneth Copeland is Kenneth Copeland. You can preach everything when Kenneth Copeland comes. He is Kenneth Copeland. God's system for faith. insecurity and competition and backbiting and all of these things happen when there is an intrinsic fear that a system of value higher than yours is within a vicinity so rather than fighting you trust god and say lord lift me the popular hymn says lord lift me up and let me stand huh by faith on heaven's table land it says a higher plane than i found lord set my feet on higher ground that's the prayer father we thank you for tonight I have spoken to your people addressing what may be the gap between them and their results and Lord I have spoken by your spirit as you have inspired me I ask tonight in the name of Jesus that these words will be spirit and life to the listeners Lord, as they subscribe to the laws of diligence, I pray that their results will come speedily. In the name of Jesus, that those who laugh at you now, their tongues will cleave to the roof of their teeth because they will see the wonder-working power of God in your life. I pray for someone here who may be discouraged and is wondering, Lord, I've done my best. I've done my best. I speak a word of hope for you right now. 
and I declare that you will have the last laugh in the name of Jesus that which you are doing by the Spirit will work for you it may take time but as surely as the Sun arises after a night time your result will come I pray for the grace to be strategic in your approach that you will not dissipate energy randomly and I pray for the fortitude to be sacrificial and that with pleasure in the name of Jesus Christ finally I pray for you that in the name of Jesus the grace and the ability to be tenacious and unbending the resolve to stay through may that grace be supplied you now in the name of Jesus Christ wave your hands to Jesus very quickly Lord we thank you there's someone here saying apostle I need Jesus we're in a hurry but it's no license for me to leave this place without a genuine encounter with Jesus another person is saying apostle I love God but the way my life is right now I think that I really need a restoration you may be inside you may be outside wherever you are please i like you even if it's just one of you be bold be courageous take that step and walk towards me right now i want to pray for you koinonia appreciate them someone is coming god bless you someone is coming is this the best you can do koinonia there are people outside if you are coming join them quickly god bless you for your courage god bless you for your courage keep clapping koinonia jesus is bringing them Jesus is bringing them. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them very quickly. Join quickly. I want to pray now. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Those of you in front, I love you and I appreciate you. While we wait for those outside to quickly join them if there are any, I want you to raise your right hand. Say after me very sincerely. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Please join them, join them, my sister, God bless you. Those online, you can join them to say, Lord Jesus, I love you. Say it again, I love you. And I believe that you are the son of God. Tonight, I ask you to forgive my sins, to cleanse me with your precious blood. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I reign in life. I declare that from tonight, I'm a child of God. Amen. Thank you so much for this great decision. Please follow the lady waving her hands. All of you in front, God bless you. Follow that lady waving her hands. There will be a group of people to receive you and communicate a few words. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage. For more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. the face of development lord grant me the discipline